check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, one, two, check. Ja, eins, zwei, Test, Test, eins, Test, eins, zwei, Test, 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 eins, zwei. Warte mal, jetzt nicht. Ey, ey, ey. Check, 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 check. Ja, konnte schon. Aber jetzt? Nee, jetzt reicht, würde ich sagen. Ja, check, check.
Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Wir freuen uns, Welcome and good morning. Please take a seat so we can get started. Let me give you some housekeeping information. First of all, regarding all of you who have lost something, for example, we found some keys at Moritz Bastei. Anything regarding lost and found is at the um, organization desk right at the entrance on the left hand side, right behind the ticket sales counters on the left hand side. So we found a pair of keys that we found yesterday at Moritz Bastei. And uh, secondly, a very important note. If you want to visit the zoo, you'll have to buy a ticket, and anyone entering illegally will be <laughs> will be brought to the monkey house. So apparently there were some misunderstandings, not because of the monkeys, bec but because of the tickets that have to be Board. We'll get started in a few seconds, so please take a seat. Thank you. So, einen wunderschönen guten Morgen, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our big hall of the Congress Hall at Zoo Leipzig. A very warm welcome to all of you and those of you connected via live stream online on digitization of um, education and a dialogue between the federal and lender level after more than two years of the corona pandemic showed us that we are still left behind regarding the digitization but those two years also showed that we can innovate and that we catch up. Uh, online participation is more and more dependent on digital skills and competences. Those who are not digitized will be knocked out, as Vladimir Kitschko would say. It's one of the biggest social challenges to make sure that all parts of societies um, able to participate in a digital transformation. We need a decisive education, educational, holistic approach, making sure that educational biographies are not left behind, which is um, our challenge as continuing education centers and as Volkshochschule. We demand a digitization fund and technical for technical infrastructure and a federal program to focus on different levels and facilitating funding for teaching staff and qualifi for qualifying them and a close collaboration between uh, lender and federal level and municipalities. These questions are those that we like to discuss in the no coming minutes. And I'd like to welcome our guest, Eva Feusner. Since uh, 2021, she's uh, been in charge of the Christ Democrats. And she was part of the Committee of um, Education and Science and Cultures and the State Secretary where she started 2021. And since 2022, she's Education Minister of 
um, Saxony Anhalt. A very warm welcome to you. Dr. Jens Brandenburg, since 2017, he's been part of the Liberal Democrats at the constituency of Rhein-Neckar, and he was head of um, science and uh, speaker of um, high school, of uh, universities, and edu continuing education, lifelong learning, and he's also the parliamentary secretary of the Federal Ministry for Education and Research. Welcome. And Dr. Ernst Dieter Rossmann, between 1988 till 21, he was member of the uh, Parliament and the uh, Liberal Democrats and part of the Committee of um, Education and Research. And between 2007 and 2019, he was voluntary chair of the German Association of um, Adult Education Centers, DVV, and head of the uh, Landesverband of um, Volkshochschule in Schleswig-Holstein. Let's uh, start right hands on. If you agree in the coalition agreement of the Liberal Democrats and the Greens, it says that funding and investments in digital infrastructures are planned. We are funded in uh, the army, we have a high inflation rate, and uh, we have support packages for uh, the uh, population. Also, we'd like to um, cut funding to make sure that uh, we uh, don't get more and more debts. Of course, we would like uh, to make sure, I mean, I was also, I worked on the coalition agreement and we were very ambitious. Digitization of education is essential here. We have national education platforms uh, where I see a lot of potential, for example, regarding the VHS portal and artificial intelligence in learning digital education. Uh, some of these um, things um, were already put into practice. But now with the uh, aggression war against Ukraine of Russia, we have to um, rethink our priorities. So, of course, um, some of, I also have to be frank and tell you that uh, some of the things will not be implemented right away. But we also agreed that the national further education uh, strategy I will also focus on continuing education and adult education where we work and cooperate with different partners. Let me ask you one question here, Secretary of State. Um, probably many of uh, our guests here are interested um, how much funding is planned for continuing education. After um, several years of working in politics, I've become very cautious without um, um, coordinating with my colleagues. And I won't give uh, exact figures here. Of course, there's still room for improvement, and we like to focus on quality here. We know that our core competence and uh, core responsibility is on the lender level, and we like to create a synergies with um, the federal level, with our national um, education platforms, the VHS learning portal, where we have to 
be honest and say that one single adult education center wouldn't be able to implement such tools. So we like to facilitate basic um, education tools here. You are um, representative of your political party, but also of KNK. Um, one of the goals is um, self-determined uh, life, further education. Is there anything you changed from what was written down in the coalition agreement? First of all, we agreed upon the digital act as um, education ministers where we also focused on uh, digital continue ed continuing education. So as KMK, we said when we only focus on school education, we have to make sure that um, digital continuing education will be part of our coalition agreement. And we had a working group where you as a Volkshochschule were involved. And we agreed and passed this um, act even before the federal um, elections took place, saying that no matter what the um, results of the federal elections will be, we will focus on those strategies and goals that were written down in our agreement. So we were very delighted about the results. So um, it's uh, not the federal level in charge here, but rather the lender level. And they certainly uh, did their homework. And I think um, stakeholders have to work together here the lender and also municipalities have to make sure that our adult education centers are prepared for the future and that uh, infrastructure and uh, skills that um, qualification that teaching staff needs are ensured. And when all of the actors work hand in hand, we will succeed. Sometimes, as a land, we provided um, funding for the ed education centers, also with regard to digital media, uh, providing f um, the digital infrastructure in form of optic fiber. But of course, there's much left to do. Um, the pandemic um, helped us to uh, gain momentum. I mean, we would like to make sure that the pandemic as such is um, limited and uh, won't affect us in a negative way. But we'd like to reach out to the citizens. And gain more potential. And we are aware of this potential. One question here. I think we all agree that we have to work together. And who would have to fund it and would have to be the initiator? Well, maybe a coalition like we had at the digital. Uh, funding agreement in terms of the teaching personnel where infrastructure was funded at national level but also on lender level. Such a cooperation uh, could be something that would work out quite well, but we have to see how the uh, coalition agreement will be implemented and of course we'll make a contribution as lender 
uh, same as the municipalities will do, as they're very much involved in adult education too. Mr. Rosman, with regard to digitization in education, you demanded a so-called new architecture of uh, digital education, which would be the founding pillars, who would be the uh, leading engineer, and who would be the architect of such an infrastructure. Well, first of all, we have to, an architect has to know what the assignment is all about, and then we need workers to build the building. I think the architect would um, be on the three levels, the national, the lender, and the municipal level. With a funding program for adult education centers and other non-profit education centers, we'll invest in digital infrastructure. The, the sentence is very easy, as same as the demand is that's behind it. It's clear they are um, prerequisites uh, in terms of the legal background and um, all of the involved stakeholders know and are aware of the importance of digital infrastructure in a future society. There is an essential question of funding here. So let me put this into perspective also regarding other challenges that the federal government faced. Say 6.5 billion that were invested in uh, digital infrastructure. Of course, um, this refers to adult education programs, but also schools should benefit from such a massive funding. Now, the challenge here is that with all the enthusiasm regarding a new chapter of adult education with a new government, um, and all the positive um, positive um, solutions that were presented, they're still lacking substance. Now, if you like to make sure that no one's left behind in society and everyone will be part of digitization, we have to offer more than 888 registered adult education center because we also have affiliates and we have more than 1,000 education centers only as part of Volkshochschule. So we'd like to speak out to the government to benefit this network to make it more popular and more visible in our society. Now, we talked about this picture of an architect with um, uh, building plans. Maybe this is a bit old-fashioned to say it like this, but when there is willpower, there is nothing that can stop us as long as we work hand in hand. So please, dear government, please provide us with more information after six months of confusion in German politics, how you can support us, how we can support you, and how we can make sure that we'll reach a common goal. I think you'd like to add something. Maybe let me just connect it with my question. Mr. Rossman said that some legal reasons could speak against it, but there are also already initiatives within national lender level. Do you think that uh, such legal 
impediments um, is something that the national level is trying to use as an excuse. Well, you just talked about the uh, um, digital law 2.0. Um, with uh, 104 million euros of funding. Anything that's necessary and then maybe from a legal perspective cannot be implemented. I know we've known each other for long, so I'd like to make sure that we'll have a hands-on approach here together. Regarding adult education, that's not the major impediment, the legal impediments, and it's not uh, political willpower that's missing either. But there are still some uh, major constitutional pillars that we have to respect here. Now, the impacts that we are currently facing, inflation, um, the uh, impacts of the pandemic, this is the price that we are paying as we live in a free country. Last year, at national level, we took more than 200 billions of new credits with uh, raising interest rates and then have to be paid back without having had any surplus. Um, budget at all. So I'd like to ask you um, if we shouldn't um, put all of the strategies on ice, but where we have the um, social ministry and a lot of different stakeholders involved, uh, we'd like to make sure that uh, we uh, work things out together and uh, gain momentum within this process to discuss these questions and to find solutions. But this process won't succeed when in the very beginning we're trying to point uh, with a finger at each other and trying to blame one another. This is not only about technical question, it's also about teaching personal, about their structures, um, exchange of best practices, pedagogical concepts, and so on. I would like to take up a question from the audience. It is what role could the European level play in digitization of adult education? The EU sees adult education also as a central part of its education strategy. There is also an investment program of 680 billion euros. It, it, can the EU play a part and who should apply for it? I will be very brief. Each opportunity that arises to use EU funds for education will be used, of course. I can only subscribe to it. The states also look around where they can acquire funds. And if the EU provides funds, of course, the states will call these funds. But let me point out one issue. It's always quite complex to use European funds at municipality level. Red tape gets more and more complicated and complex. Perhaps it would be necessary to develop a different culture within the states. Well, as to 680 billions, I cannot tell you how it breaks down. But let me give you one word of advice, which is also important psychologically. The EU looking at the education room 
uh, spoke about competence centers for the uh, teaching staff. And it will be very important whether these competence centers are only targeting schools or whether continuing education is also integrated. This will not mean billions of funds, but politically it's important and the uh, uh, adult uh, education centers are really very eager to see political signs. So that the, this level sees that the national strategy uh, comes to a general initiative for comprehensive continuing education. And we know this strict uh, separation between vocational training and uh, school training is no longer fitting. So a structural plan for teaching staff, including also adult education, this would be an offer I see as a signal. What about such an approach? State Secretary, the first competence centers have been launched and in close cooperation, uh, cooperation with the standing conference, they focus on general continue education, but, and this will be uh, discussed in the framework of the national uh, continuing education strategy. You know the core is how can we better organize that new scientific findings are faster implemented into practice. Often we have a lot of scientific discussions, but that arrive in practice only years later. But I see this as an issue. Mr. Rossmann, you spoke about science. Let me highlight two aspects. When I came here, I was aware that I will not, not get a lot of applause here because uh, I am aware of the current budget situation. But I consider it important to be here because uh, Continuing education is something I really care for. And please see this also as a signal. And I know what Volkshochschule and other education institutions do. And you can be sure there is no consensus that general continuing education should be part of it. We agreed on it, and now we really pay attention that general continuing education gets the place it deserves. I see it as a process. And to say that the national continuing education strategy is not only a vocational issue, but also the participation of a senior citizen is part of it, and also language courses, not only for interpreters, but for everybody. This is an important change also with regard to upcoming political decisions. We always have to be aware of this. One question from among the audience. The Institute for Digital, Digital Transformation says Germany is the last but one among seven leading European industrial nations. And uh, internationally, Germany occupies rank 11. So you now have this responsibility. The question is, not a lot has happened, but 
if one wants, one can achieve it. When will you start really to work for it? Minister, for the standing conference. I have described it. We in the standing conference have said it's very important and it must be part of the plans of the federal government. Now the political actors need to implement it and we will control and monitor it. When you say it's a common task, of course it's true. Nobody can do it uh, by itself. So the federal, the uh, uh, state, and the municipal level need to participate. We all have to work in the re same direction and have to see to it that we bring our country ahead. And it's no good to point the finger at financial aspects and say we need the funds. Let me just tell you one thing. We have experienced a pandemic in the school and it will continue. And also adult education providers will need make a major contribution. And if we do not equip our Volkshochschule accordingly, then it will have an even grave, graver consequence for the future. And we cannot afford this at any level. We all have to realize what the upcoming challenges are to make up for deficits and vocational continuing education is important, but general continuing ed education is also very important for this transformation process. This is our common task. Dr. Rossmann, it's the political common task. There is also a legal common task, regional economy must be strengthened, and we really want to modernize it. Digitization changes many processes, communication, technology, one. So it's a classical common task for all the stakeholders. But legally speaking, Mr. Uh, Brandenburg, you said you start with the competence centers in the area of schools. But you know, the adult education centers have a lot of skills built up over the years. How can these skills be used and it would be an opportunity to bring school and continuing education skills? It's almost an offer. We use experts, and the, they should be integrated into these competence centers right from the beginning. And you know, in the past, your party group uh, launched a bill. Uh, an intense cooperation at that time. You know, there the uh, adult education centers were also included. And shouldn't this also be done now when it comes to the digitization? Uh, the Volkshochschule could be a partner. Uh, the, we make this offer. Please take them up, and if funds are required, 
where the digitization infrastructure is not yet so developed, our wish would be to know this already right from the beginning so that the uh, Volkshochschule can also participate. And I'm not thinking of uh, billions. I mean, uh, three-digit million amounts are also very welcome. Well, uh, State <laughs> Secretary, you yes, get uh, off lightly today. Well, currently, I mean, we have more to make more budget cuts, so to be quite open also with regard to the original question, I hear it at every meeting, there are 100 billion for the German army, so we should also get 100 billion. I mean, you didn't do it, Mr. Rossmann, but we always had the issue of generation justice. I mean, I, for me, it's very difficult that we have to do the funding over credit. So this huge amount of 100 billion and the other additional debts need to be paid back because these are credits and interests are going up. So it's still the beginning of the interest curve. 12 billion euros we have to pay for interest of debt we took out in the past. So each euro we can get, I also have to look at the overall picture because it does is no good if we can just make uh, political measures for the next two years. And of course, uh, we, also, uh, we also have to think of the pensions, new debt will uh, trigger more inflammation, uh, inflation. I'm quite pleased that in the budget negotiations, we took over the old budget and uh, it was intended to reduce. And we have at least achieved a moderately increasing budget. Let me be very open here. You suggested that nothing is happening. I would say something is happening. I also consider the uh, uh, digital learning portal very important, especially general education. It's very important that adults with low skills can take part in digital learning. And we have to make these things generally available and the commitment that exists should not be ignored. These are steps to improve the life. You mentioned costs, the high uh, credits taken out Well, uh, John Kennedy uh, once said, uh, the only thing that is more expensive than education is no education. Well, this requires funds. Dr. Rossmann already said he would be satisfied with a million amounts. I heard that there was a, a plus in at the state level. There should be something that can be otherwise spent. Well, we have not yet 
implemented all the measures. I do not know what state you mean, but we will not generate a plus. We use our own funds to, to support the uh, adult education centers in the field of digitization. It's not sufficient, but we provide funds. And let me highlight one more thing. We are talking about money all the time, which is very important, but we are talking about social participation in the field of education, digital education, analog education, etc. And if we do not recognize and promote this resource, then our society will suffer. And this is what we need to recognize, that it, this is the precondition for social development for our future. This is the basic condition, and I can talk about many other things. It's a question of priorities in our state. You mentioned networks. We made agreements with adult uh, education centers where schools and uh, these centers work together, where we also work to make up for the lacks occurred because of the pandemic. And we need to do it together. And also the federal level has to be aware of this. A simple question from the audience, how uh, can uh, the uh, uh, association of Volkshochschule be uh, uh, integrated in the national f continuing education strategy? Please understand, our ministry doesn't do it alone, but we do it in coordination with the other partners. I cannot give you a list, but let me just highlight what I said. We consider it very important that general continuing education is part of the strategy, so it's also important to get relevant actors into these bodies. The uh, DVV is one of the central actors for general continuing education in Germany. One more question. The support program, uh, what are the uh, concrete targets? I just said that it's still early days and during the process of the uh, uh, national strategy for continuing education, we have to discuss it now as a result of the war in the Ukraine. Uh, the timeline will be longer in the coalition negotiations. It was seen as a program that could give an impetus, but not as a, bill, a billion euro uh, program. We will uh, discuss it, and of course, we uh, then will get started. Well, it was said a uh, consensus can not automatically be assumed. It's not only about legal possibilities, but also about the political will. We have uh, different uh, governments in the different states, CDU, Greens, etc., SPD. 
do you see a common political will or is there the danger that each state does what it wants? I don't see uh, such a threat in this area, to be honest. Uh, we have this position paper that we elaborated and uh, we uh, reached consensus in quite a short time frame. We have We've had two chairs, one uh, of the uh, chairs was me, the other one representatives of uh, Saarland. And our approach was quite hands-on. And we reached consensus quite quickly and we, uh, our political asks were f f stated in our um, paper without any further discussion and what we're waiting for now is the green light on how such an agreement may or what it may look like regarding the implementation the same thing uh, the same questions were raised such as with the agreement on the funding of digitization but uh, apart from this and regarding our political asks, um, we've reached a broad consensus. Let me say something uh, more general. When we talk about digitization, we share a common network, which is which doesn't, doesn't have any borders and it doesn't know about um, municipal uh, lender or federal level. So this is a completely new situation that we face. We share a common responsibility. Of course, um, with our political wishes, and the uh, digitization strategies. This is something that we stick on to. Um, the coalition agreement gave us hope. On the other hand, qualification is knowing how to cooperate in uh, the internet and how to uh, how to move in such a medium we have many people who worked really hard in the last month and did their very best to mobilize new energies so you have to use this momentum and um, take it with you to uh, reach the goals and it's it's too far to th talk about 2025 those moment this momentum will have already passed a few years from here one last question secretary of J state as we're running a bit late the national adult education strategies was something that was that you criticize. Now, do you see an opportunity with a new coalition agreement? I never demanded a new act, and it's not anchored in the coalition agreement. It's rather part of the coalition strategy. Or well, let's put it the other way around. In uh, professional further education, we have different asks or demands f for people who demanded a new law. And I'd like to read this first, and if this um, these political asks convince me, I'll be glad to work on a new law. And I'm so, this uh, the further education strategy is so important and close to my heart because we have to work to together at the European level, uh, lender level, national level, municipal level, but also with different cooperation partners such as uh, foundations, um, 
ed education centers and so on. So these synergies are often much more important, especially when we talk on the, at the federal level. We are not talking about more learning portals, but rather a meta platform that will be able to communicate with all different platforms that are already used to enable a useful user journey here. And I think the VHS education portal is something uh, that will be very beneficial here. And I see huge potential here because a lot of networks are built up from a lot of different actors, but using um, those synergies to work together is something that we still miss. But um, often the uh, prerequisites are missing to make these partners in the or put them in the situation to network. Sorry uh, to interrupt you, but that was something I really had to to mention at this point. Sorry to to uh, um, <laughs> put it like that, but I think that the partners are responsible to do their networking homework here, and it also depends on a fast internet infrastructure of regarding the qualification of uh, teaching personnel. We cannot do this consecutively one after another, but uh, these are challenges that have to be, that we have to tackle all at the same time. These questions of digitization are even more important uh, in terms of education than laws at the federal level. As we'll have a press conference here, uh, let me conclude and wrap up here. Um, this dialogue showed that it's important to engage in dialogue and exchange. Dear Ministry of State, thank you very much uh, for facing this rather um, tricky conversation here. Dr. Rosman, many thanks to you too. And maybe let me wrap up with a quote as we talked about funding and technology. Let's not forget what uh, Volkshochschule stands for. The most important thing in digitization is to not forget about the human in the being. So thank you very much for your contributions and for this very fruitful discussion.
I got peace in my mind. I got peace in my mind. Knowing that we've got the ties that bind gives me peace in my mind. The lights are so much brighter. The colors so. I got joy in my soul. I got joy in my soul. The fact that you're happy, what's making me whole, puts a little joy in my soul. I got love in my heart. I got love in my heart. The promise that no man can tear us apart puts a lot of love in my heart. The lights are so much brighter. The colors so. I got more I can give. So much more I can give. As you pour and pour into me over again, but I got more I can give. The lights are so much brighter. The colors so. Deeper. 
Mein, ich bitte, das kommt gleich. Meine Damen und Herren, keine Sorge, wir fangen noch nicht an, aber wir haben eine Bitte an Sie. Wir haben well, we just have one request. You know, we have a lot of echo and uh, now uh, it would be much more convenient when you form more of a group Perhaps you could come a bit to the four. We will start in one minute. Just words. You bring me songs, sweet like the birds. So I got more than just words. I got peace in my mind I got peace in my mind Knowing that we've got the ties that bind Gives me peace in my mind The lights are so much brighter The colors so I got joy in my soul I got joy in my soul The fact that you're happy What's making me whole Puts a little joy in my soul I got love in my heart I got love in my heart I promise that no man can tear us apart So then an dieser Stelle noch einmal ein ganz herzliches Willkommen Well a warm welcome to Forum 5 we will deal with bringing the outside in, change, uh, continuity and resilience of adult education centers. Uh, the Volkshochschule always try to deal with urgent issues of life. And when the issues of life change, also adult education centers change. How can adult education centers have a positive effect as agents of transformation? Well, it is about uh, learning new things and to support each uh, other by networks New learning uh, is only possible if I meet experts who support me on this journey. You are already aware of the app with the program, which you can also use to ask questions. Here it's a bit special. So if you ask questions about sustainability only at the end, it may be a bit too late. We will start with sustainability first. Uh, Dr. Felix Eckhart, uh, he is the head of the Research Institute for Sustainability and Climate Policy. So this is the first block. If you've got questions about it, Please uh, ask them early in the app. You find it under Forum 5, yeah, where you get to Slido. Use this, and my job will be to put your questions forward. And then we will deal with the issue of diversity. Here, the uh, lead will be Emilia uh, Roig. She uh, uh, 
has worked in different universities in Germany, France, the U.S., and she is an expert about uh, equality, intersectional social justice, etc. And then in a third block, we will discuss about transformation of adult education and transformation of the Volkshochschule. Dr. Samine Koppe, head of the uh, regional Volkshochschule, where she is responsible for the uh, Department of Foreign Languages. She is an interpreter for English and Spanish. And then we also have Arne Selinski. He is an expert for structural reform. So now I ask you to give a round of applause to our experts. Now we will start with sustainability. Mr. Selinski, you know, this is service he wanted to take the question over. I see here all the questions you asked. Let me start with sustainability uh, and you, uh, Professor Eckhart. When it comes to sustainability, well, uh, one should act very early. The early things are changed, the higher the effect. Or you may also say, well, now it's too late. Has the world become more somber during the last five years? Good morning. Sustainability is the ideal to live and to uh, have an economy to ensure the future. Uh, don't start with a three-pillar model. In order to make a social issue relevant, you do not have to press it under the umbrella of sustainability. Well, when you ask whether the world has become more somber, you know, I'm not only a lawyer, but also a philosopher by background. It's always what you measure it against climate issue, if I take out the global aim, the 1.5 uh, degree limit compared to 1990, then we have to say that the global community goes in the wrong direction. We have to come to zero fossil fuels and have to dra drastically reduce animal husbandry. In order to get to this goal of 1.5 degrees, uh, it's already a bit late. It's not that we have time until 2050. These are political concepts in Germany and in Europe that do not do justice to the binding goal. Well, I wouldn't use the uh, wording, but I think the situation has become more somber. What can be very traumatic is what happens now. The war in the Ukraine has made it clear that we are not talking about nice to have, but that fossil fuels kill people. We have 400,000 people dying because of air pollution, mainly due to fossil fuel use and animal husbandry. We don't think about it a lot. And now we see that aggressive dictatorships are also funded 
by the export of fossil fuel, and we will not change this when we uh, change the supply uh, sources. There remains a lot to be done. Do you see continuing education as an active actor in this field? Well, there are two conditions for transformation. In total, the diversity of scientific schools dealing with drives people. So my first statement would be the interchange of transformation is important. There is not an individual actor that triggers change. They all are all interdependent. Of course, we need different political measures, but you need to demand this actively. And you have to change your personal life. It doesn't make sense just to point the finger to somebody. We are all interdependent. We need a post fossil uh, pol politics, not only in Germany, at, at least in the EU. And when you ask what is the relevance of the education sector, then the second condition is, and I have to tell you regrettably, well, it's a pity, but education is not the main actor because we have to get post-fossil uh, within a few years. We have to make changes now. When you educate people in adult education, you have to make clear first what you personally do because People need examples, knowledge and values, which could also be called awareness, are subject to things like own use, path dependency. So if you want to trigger a radical change, make uh, events for sustainability, but but be a role model. Just give up uh, a flight to your holidays. Do not use your car. Think what uh, you eat. I would now ask Mr. Zelinsky and Mrs. Copper a question from the audience that is very fitting here. Uh, Adult, is our adult education uh, offers uh, not just offers for well-off people to feel good? No, I don't agree. Actually, we have to arrive at a mixture of what was said, that we are a role model, that we have to encourage people to start changes. Often it's small things. In the program you can, for instance, say there is an alternative to come to our events by public transport. What I consider very important, that sustainability is a kind of mainstream for all our activities. It's possible. In language education, you can discuss environmental pollution in different regions. And of course, we can't wait until 2050. We have to work now. We must not say we develop now huge programs to get there in a period of time. We have to be a role model. People have to see it have to take us seriously and understand that sustainability is important for adult education. Mr. Zelinsky, it's quite a provocative question. Uh, 
the issue is important and we don't have the time now to deal for 20 years with sustainability, but to use more plastic, for instance, is an important issue, whether it is be used by well-heeled people doesn't change the importance of this topic in how far it's a major issue for adult education, I cannot tell you. It de probably depends from region to region, and I think more people will take it up. Mr. Eckert, is this enough for you? It's too much of a routine. It is the uh, VHS conference, but I do not know whether you are aware of what happens. It's may, it may be that people will die because of cold. We are facing existential uh, problems. We try to replace fossil fuels that are as fatal as uh, the ones we are using, for instance, uh, LPG from Qatar, and we keep up the prices, and Putin continues to make a lot of money. So we sit here and just give it some thoughts, but within a few months, we have to radically change our life. Well, I'm very sorry that, that it is uh, so radical, uh, and uh, we, you know, we have a herd instinct, we are slow, but the change of awareness is not that is imp so important. What is important that we change our normalities. Uh, we need a radically different uh, politics, but when you look at the German politics, the EU politics, I, I mean, uh, there is a lot of disaster and emergency uh, planning going on that is not made public. So we are faced with a situation where I can only urge everybody to stop their routines, but to look what you can do individually, where can you play a political role, because we need to organize post-fossil area. We agree on the goal, but you know, the audience says, how can the uh, adult education reach SUV drivers and people who eat a lot of meat? The uh, adult education centers are closer to daily life than uh, pupils at school. You can imagine it's a big event. We have booked the biggest room here, and nevertheless, it looks quite crowded. So many people from adult education want to deal with these issues. What can these people do to create a positive effect? They must be part of the transformation they have to be aware that uh, post uh, fossil a fossil era is the goal we will not be able to use fossil based plastics it needs to come from renewables but we do not have the land to grow all this so it starts with Whatever event you organize has to be done in this spirit. It's not about finding a path. Well, uh, it, we have to know 
uh, how do I get to places, to my uh, uh, vacation uh, location? How do I heat my home? What do I eat? How do I create the preparedness for change? One way is to be a role model and then also show the double relevance of each and everybody. So you are all uh, part of the political sphere by uh, attending demonstrations, by going to the vote, by exchanging with the neighbors. And we are all part of consumption and production, uh, not only by our purchasing decisions, but also by exchanging with others. It's not only about pointing out there's also public transport, but you have to show how drastic this situation is. The situation is drastic, and our action should also be drastic. Well, with regard to diversity, how can I make the urgency of the situation clear without putting people off saying, I have already done such a lot, uh, but n not again. When the uh, topics are so drastic, what can I do to not to antagonize people, but to take them along? Well, you know, I have to say everything in a nutshell. Just Google Felix Nachhaltigkeit. There is an article in the Zeit journal that details it. What is necessary that we better understand? And we have to go back to Rousseau and Marx that we come from nature and that we have an emotional budget uh, which blocks us, and we have to make this an issue. We can explain why certain peoples do not want to do it. We have a loss aversion. We can make this an issue. We have an habituation effect. We want to get more. We have something then we want to have more, then we consider it as something uh, normal. So this growth philosophy is something human, but we cannot say it's okay. In a liberal democracy, everybody can think what he wants, everybody can wish to have a Ferrari and to drive it high speed through the inner city. But of course, we destroy our environment. We have to see all this. A lot of unpleasant things come up for us and the image of a rational person is questioned. It's uncomfortable. We have to leave our comfort zone, but how can we achieve this? Well, um, my first <laughs> word, 24 minutes after uh, the launch of this event, hello. Well, leaving your comfort zone, I think the individual level is extremely important because uh, we can um, be much more effective on the individual level, level than uh, CEOs and companies. At, on the other hand, it's extremely problematic to reduce all this to the individual level because as long as organic food is as expensive as it is today, also with regard to inflation, only a few things will be able to afford it. And as long as uh, taking a train is comparably more expensive than uh, taking a plane, uh, we won't be able to solve the problem, which is why we need political um, decisions that are radical. Now, what folk social may do here is to 
give incentives for uh, critical thinking, such as uh, with the demonstrations that are now taking place with Fridays for Future, things that were not taught at school. And these are uh, processes that can be learned in such institutions. I think it's obvious that we shouldn't eat any meat, and if possible, we should um, eat uh, vegan. At the at the same time, what we see is that proportionally, highest damages are made or caused by companies uh, that are um, not tangible at the moment. Sorry, uh, please don't interrupt me at the moment. Well, just one question here. The central challenges with regards to climate and sustainability uh, were something that we've already put on the table, but uh, we do not want to forget other central challenges in terms of structural discrimination and diversity. Where do you see the challenges in our society at the moment? And the same question as already asked, do you think that the folk socially can set play a central role here? Well, the problem of uh, diversity and inclusion is something that is not mentioned by its name, which is discrimination, oppression, social injustice. And folk social is the same as other civil uh, um, institutions have to reach a consensus where we all address the same problems. One problem is that uh, there is a vast majority of white men in the key positions of uh, big companies, and that doesn't have anything to do with um, qualifications. Um, but it's a totally different issue here. And once uh, we agree that there's something wrong with our system, we'll be able to uh, create solutions. But now we're still at a different level asking ourselves, is diversity a problem at all? Is racism a problem at all? Well, I'm speaking a lot in such forums, and we are always uh, there's always the question on the table whether we are actually facing a problem and what discrimination is all about. Um, let's assume that we are already one step further here. I think uh, we already uh, touched uh, on those topics and other forums here within this conference, trying to um, see how to structurally um, develop as an institution, how to address other social groups. Well, when we already moved uh, towards this direction now, why do we have a system in which children are still divided into different school systems so early on. Why is German as a language still the only m mandatory language and no bilingual education with Turkish or Arabic, such as at my child's school? And to say it's okay to talk in Turkish or Arabic in your uh, school break. Now, talking about Arabic um, women or about women in total, there's, they're underrepresented. Why don't we have, why haven't we introduced a quote for women in uh, key positions? These are the measures that um, should have been taken. There should be subjects in uh, at school to um, teach about oppression, about historical 
discrimination and so on. And there's a demand for it. People want to understand why we are living in an unjust society. Now, um, it's not on uh, adult education centers or folk social to teach or heal what went wrong in the past. Now, what can adult education centers do about all of this? I always say that we're always in the position to prepare and solve all the social challenges that are faced. We know that we have a very, very different situation. Some of our schools or education centers only have one or two employees, and others have a totally, are in a totally different position, such as in bigger cities here in Leipzig. So I think it would be good as a first step to raise awareness on the topics that we should address. And then we will um, live up to those challenges. We uh, are open for new challenges, and we work on them. This is the most important role for uh, Volkshochschule. But I also have to say that sometimes colleagues are really pushed to their limits because they're not sufficiently equipped, especially when it comes to stuff. Uh, we're understaffed. At the same time, I think we've already achieved a lot. And especially in the times of the pandemic, networking has become uh, more, um, much more important than it used to be. So we've taken a great path, and we should uh, move on from that. Maybe we won't be able to achieve a full transformation, but we can point out to uh, what's possible and to be a role model that's reflected in our behavior with uh, corporations, for example. So something that can be, can be done uh, on our own, for example, working with uh, Fridays for Fair Futures, with um, the uh, 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 federal level, and so on. And this is something that we uh, do work on every single day in our work. Do you think this is enough? Um, what would you wish from uh, adult education centers? I think it's important to adapt those services to the current uh, challenges. And I think this adaptation is way too slow. We need much more resources. We have to acknowledge this because these sectors are mainly um, stuffed by with women, dominated by women, especially women working in education. This means um, that uh, these sectors are devaluated and underfunded. Um, we have to say it uh, the way it is. Uh, we have to be frank here. And we don't have the resources. Those working in the sector, when half of the stuff is already burnt out, it doesn't help, and the resources are there. It's a myth to say that there is not enough money. We have enough money in our society. The fact that uh, a nine euro ticket was possible from one day to another, which uh, showed when there is a will, it, there is a way to, to do it. We have to create uh, structural conditions to facilitate um, this work here. We have to create framework conditions The main condition here would be to increase funding. Now, 
Now we touched uh, on two important issues, social issues and topical issues. Now the question is how do we cope with it? How can uh, adult education centers become more resilient and what does it actually mean to be a social institution for transformation? More uh, funding, more resources is something that we'll all accept, but that's not what it's all about. We do have funding and personnel. That's something to start with. Maybe we could start in the institutions to provoke a change. And sometimes I asked uh, people, do you actually know the name of your facility manager? Um, it's also about appreciation. So it's not all about funding or money. Whether or not we are an institution for transformation as ed education centers, this is uh, something I'm probably not able to um, re reply to now. But uh, of course, we are part of the uh, social transformation. And we shouldn't underestimate our role as an amplifier, social amplifier. with a lot of different courses that we offer. And that deal with uh, those topics. Just one thing regarding the uh, continuing uh, training. I see a lot of deficits here when we talk about inclusion and diversity as something that adds on uh, it and saying we have to become more diverse and not talking about the reasons for um, the lack of inclusion. Then we've done something wrong. I mean, it's, it's nice to have workshops on uh, implicit bias especially in institutionalized discrimination, that's nice, but it's not enough. So offering such courses, mandatory courses and subjects within a curriculum and uh, quality content, offering a foundation um, based on intersectionality, that could be a solution. I think there's not enough that's done at the moment here. Usually, we always remain on the discursive uh, level. Uh, I won't uh, pick up on uh, the uh, discrimination topics because um, we don't have enough time here, but I'd like to uh, pick up on uh, some misunderstandings here. First of all, I did not say that the issue here is on a moral level. I said that fact-based knowledge have a limited impact on our behavior, so it doesn't help a lot to uh, always address moral here. At this, uh, secondly. I didn't say I uh, don't care about politics and corporate behavior. I said there has to be a synergy. There is no main actor here. Now the question whether it's uh, companies or politics or we all of us, journalists, uh, whoever is a main actor, um, it doesn't make sense because uh, they all depend on each other. The central point of our work, I wrote two of my PhD works on uh, uh, transformations, but we need tools of politics 
even though I work a lot on all of this. It doesn't help to sit here and uh, say new politics is necessary, unnecessary. Poli policy makers interact with us. So it's like a vicious cycle asking about the main actor, the same as between companies and consumers. Companies exist because we are their consumers, and then the same thing happens the other way around. So there's an interaction taking place here, which is what I mean by talking about synergies of transformation. So it's always, at the same time, it's always good to address people and companies and NGOs and politics, then it's much easier to understand that uh, structures um, are often difficult to identify. There's some c discussions going on here in the application and some points of them uh, I'd like to mention here are the following. The uh, staff members want to stand up for values, but at the same time, um, they don't want to be overwhelmed by politics. Or overpowered. At the same time, people also pay for the services they use. So it's a demand driven um, school that also has to adapt their services to the demand. And then, as a white middle class institutions, maybe white, uh, maybe uh, adult education centers may be part of the problem and not part of the solution. So these were some of the comments I'd like to pass on to you. It um, uh, suits to what I was going to say. I think we have to make sure then when if you'd like to live diversity, how can we address certain target groups? And we don't succeed in this yet. We have um, our our um, users that have been visiting us for many years, and sometimes we don't succeed yet in uh, addressing new target uh, new uh, users. Some um, ed education centers, folk social, already use a particip participatory approach where uh, students can say, I have a question here, how can I deal with it? From our experience, a lot of participants have a very big questions like those that we are dealing with as a society, and they don't really know how to deal with those questions. And it's good that um, we are open for their questions. So we still have to improve on how we address those people in a much more direct way. On the other hand, I'm deeply convinced that uh, adult education centers have always changed in the past and always managed to adapt to um, the current demands. I don't think we have to run behind every single topic. topic. We also have to stick to our roots. On the other hand, we have to make sure that we also want to reach out to you target groups, which is also about awareness. Am I fine with um, just having my regular students uh, with or regular customers, or do I want to leave the comfort zones? Uh, do I want to uh, go to a certain neighborhood, um, address those people, ask what their needs are, what uh, they're looking for, then uh, we would be less marginalized. And in the worst case, we would become part of the problem. 
One question here. What would you wish for the impact of continuing education in a society? Maybe if you could limit yourself to two sentences. Before answering this question, I'd like to pick up on um, structures and the individual responsibility again regarding diversity. Let's uh, take the gender pay gap between women and men. It amplifies each other. It, there's a synergy here. At the same time, without the abolishment of uh, certain regulations, uh, we will not uh, move ahead. Now, if we only focus on mentoring and empowerment of women, as I see in many companies that only focus on this, we'll reach a situation where women are brought into the position to change their behavior, which is partly also necessary, but we forget about the injustice and the tax gap, pay gap. For example, in uh, Germany, we have this law which uh, creates a lot of injustice between married couples, the splitting or separate taxation of um, married couples. Of a spouse and uh, um, and a woman. Now, injustice in uh, different social classes also linked to uh, discrimination. Of course, we can go to the communities which will help but it won't be enough. Something I would wish for in, with regards to Volkshochschule. I would like people to have a critical look at society and to know what change is all about. Never without questioning what's going wrong because we are in a system that is designed for people to fit in and not to question things. And that's not enough to deal with the crisis that we are currently facing. Mrs. Copper, what should be the benefit of continuing education with regard to the issues we've just raised? The benefit is clear that we push ahead with these issues. We are one of the few institutions that offers this complexity of issues and provide a forum to people to discuss it, to start a change of paradigm. This often doesn't happen elsewhere especially when it comes to initial uh, education, primary education, I would uh, question it. But what I wish is that the uh, what is done by adult education is recognized and that we are not seen as a necessary evil and uh, in the worst case, if there is a problem, well, let's the adult education centers solve it. When most of the Volkshochschule marked their 100th anniversary, I like to look back to the early days. What great time must it have been of a new start when you were just Please to have continuing education. People were really asking for it, and adult education was a place to come together 
to form alliances to launch change. And I would like to see this again, that we are a place where we show the opportunities of change and go in the right direction with many actors together. And I think we can do this. Just one sentence, because I was addressed, well, politics comes together in an interaction of a host of different actors. I can show you a plan how we can be post-fossile fossil in five or six years. but. Many things will change in your life. But now back to the question. We continuing education, if it wants to have a future, ne needs to do two things, in my opinion. On the one hand, it needs, well, with sustainability, there is always the question to get everybody on board. When it comes to discrimination, uh, this is not the case. I do not criticize it because I do not demand to take everybody on board, but I, we are a representative democracy. It's about majorities. It's not about a consensus. Well, so we should give it up also for sustainability issues. And you know, uh, I'm uh, not working in adult education, but we should be up to the time. The Beutelsbacher consensus was a different world. Currently, we are discussing whether there will be uh, a uh, Europe marked by freedom, some parties have no interest in it. Just l watch uh, Russian TV, so uh, it may be we won't have adult education in Germany. Brace yourself for a situation that we prevent it, I think. Uh, nobody uh, in the uh, adult should in education uh, we taught uh, Alexander Bukin, who uh, likes uh, Alexander Schmidt. I see the benefit of continuing education also with regard to feeling good. Uh, the radical change which is necessary will not take place. I'm relatively sure, not because I do not want it, but I think the society we live in, we had a kind of uh, capitalist critical discussion. But you know, as long as the ownership relations are what they are, not a lot will change. I mean, this doesn't mean you shouldn't try. But continuation, uh, continuing education should also lead to the feeling, to feeling good, so that you can think about a world marked by freedom, to think freely and make thought experiments. This is also central to continuing education. We still face the same problem. Just some comments, it was said that to open the discourse also when it comes to unpleasant issue. And one problem is that this need to participate in continuing education is not so obvious. Adult education, unless uh, schools do not have the task to form people 
And uh, here one r request is to make the discussion more practical so the people who participate in your courses go there voluntarily. They pay for it. They do it in their leisure time, perhaps also as a kind of uh, leisure activity compared to a difficult job. How can we do it to uh, in integrate such difficult issues within the structure of adult education? Yes, this is a major challenge, and we always ask this question, how can we achieve it? In my opinion, it's only possible if these issues are really mainstreamed in all our activities. We will not launch a program where we say we will discuss diversity and sustainability. Nobody will show up, but we can integrate these issues by training our staff. And why shouldn't these issues be discussed in a Spanish language course? Because in many countries where these languages are spoken, these problems are even uh, stronger. And uh, the participants can then act as multipliers in this society. I see this as the cause so that you start through the a kind of backdoor. I agree to Arne. You can discuss these issues in a protected area to make it less severe, not less serious, to trigger small changes. And I know that many of my colleagues are doing this on a daily basis, we, many Volkshochschule have uh, offer second chance courses. So these are young people uh, who were not successful in school. We can train these young people by raising these issues in the different subjects. This is the way I see. So we have to use all the uh, possibilities we have in our courses. Let me take up what has been said. I do not want to be pessimistic. It's rather realistic. We have to change a system that has existed for 100 years, and it will not happen from one day to the other. We know what needs to be changed, and it's possible. But the hierarchies on which this system is based are so much rooted that it requires a basic transformation of the whole system. The climate crisis cannot be mastered uh, without questioning money as a tool in this society. And this is utopian. And I'm of the opinion that while money plays the role it does play in our society, we cannot cope with the climate crisis. So it requires a revolution. It requires not less than a re revolution. And I take up what you said. We are too much in a routine. The schools, all social institutions have uh, aimed to bring us back to normality as soon as possible. 
And these structures are the same as long as uh, humankind is organized according to hier hierarchies where males are above women, humans above animals, uh, care below profits. It will not be possible to Ich würde immer wahnsinnig gerne ganz viel zu dem sagen, was Sie sagen, wenn wir insgesamt nicht nur diese 90 Minuten hätten. Das ist halt ein gewisses Elend, dass wir ganz unterschiedliche Themen jetzt hier gleichzeitig bereden. Das ist einerseits wahnsinnig spannend und so ein Feuerwerk von Gedanken und Assoziationen. Gleichzeitig wird man natürlich den einzelnen Fragen jeweils sind nicht gerecht. Also man könnte jetzt zum Beispiel fragen, also Sie haben jetzt ein paar Dinge aufgemacht, die darauf hinauslaufen, dass grundlegende menschliche Instinkte eigentlich gedreht werden müssten. Ähm, wie das in Wahrheit gelingen kann und was man dafür tun müsste, ist ein Riesenthema, ähm, zu dem ich jetzt aber gar nichts sagen kann. Ich sage nur, weil ich das sehr ähm, interessant fand, was Sie gesagt haben, Herr Zielinski, und ausgehend von Ihrer Frage, etwas zu zwei Punkten, äh, die, glaube ich, die wir ziemlich sicher nicht tun dürfen. Und zwar, das erste Ding ist tatsächlich, ähm, also bei aller Ehre, die Karl Marx gebühren mag und der Kritik der Eigentumsverhältnisse. Der sicherste Weg, Veränderung zu verhindern, ist, dass sie sagen, na, wir erst mal reden, bevor wir über die Änderung der Eigentumsverhältnisse reden, reden wir über gar nichts. Weil sie nämlich da hundertprozentig wissen und da, also da sind sie plötzlich ganz unpragmatisch an dem Punkt, wobei sie sonst ja sehr pragmatisch reden. Also bis wir das getan haben, sind wir alle im Dritten Weltkrieg untergegangen oder ökologisch untergegangen. Und vor allem ist das auch, also mit einem harten Punkt, und da mache ich das mal nur, historisch einfach kontraindiziert zu glauben, dass jetzt sozusagen ähm, der Sozialismus in irgendeinem Spiel, in irgendeiner Spielart die Rettung ist, die der ökologische Fußabdruck pro Wohlstandseinheit war in den sozialistischen Systemen des 20. Jahrhunderts größer als in kapitalistischen Systemen. Und vor allem, was ich auch zu berücksichtigen bitte, vergessen wir nicht ganz die evolutionsbiologischen Erkenntnisse der letzten 160 Jahre. Das Eigennutzenstreben ist, so leid es mir für Rousseau und Marx tut, nicht durch den Kapitalismus in die Welt gekommen. Ähm, also deswegen, die Diskussion können wir auch noch mal führen, aber erstmal werde ich dafür, die Welt werden. zu retten. Das ist jetzt keine absolute Wahrheit. Es tut mir leid. Und jetzt reden Sie über Instinkte. Was ist instinktiv? Die Hierarchien, dass Männer über Frauen sind, ist es Natur? Das wollen Sie sagen? Oder was sollten wir nee, also nicht wir, ändern? Ich, glaub, ich glaube, die Zeit ist an der Stelle nicht da, dass wir jetzt über Neurobiologie äh, reden, also über Robert Sapolsky und andere, aber oder über Darwin reden oder über über Edward Wilson reden. Ich würde gerne zu einem ich anderen kleinen Punkt noch was, was sagen. Ähm, und zwar, ähm, also so sehr ich diese Gelassenheit bewundere, Herr Zielinski, die Sie ausstrahlen, das Problem ist, Ihre, also Ihre Aussage, ja, radikaler Wandel wird nicht gehen, die halte ich empirisch für wahrscheinlich zutreffend. Das Problem ist nur, Sie berücksichtigen nicht, was dann passiert. Wir beide werden hier nicht in zehn Jahren nochmal sitzen und so ganz entspannt über alles Mögliche reden, denn werden dramatische Szenarien äh, sich ergeben, die sowohl Sie als auch mich als auch uns alle davonblasen. Ja, ob es jetzt ein Dritter Weltkrieg ist, ob es massive ökologische Katastrophen sind, äh, ob es ein Dritter Weltkrieg ist, der unter anderem auch durch Ungleichheit getrieben wird, weil halt Menschen in Indien oder Pakistan, männliche, weibliche, diverse Menschen keine Lust haben, weiter von uns sich die Lebensgrundlagen rauben zu lassen und das wird einfach nicht möglich sein, so entspannt weiterzumachen und deswegen, ich verstehe das so sehr, das ist sehr menschlich, das kann man übrigens auch neurobiologisch zeigen, dass wir ganz gerne nicht so gerne radikalen Wandel haben, egal ob jetzt bei Diversitätsthemen oder bei meinen Themen, das ist in uns, dass wir das nicht so gerne schnell haben, aber wir haben nicht die Alternative langsam Wandel. Wenn wir langsam es versuchen, werden wir in der einen oder anderen Weise dramatisch Brüche erleben. Aber ist es nicht ein bisschen, also für mich diese Haltung sozusagen geht auch ein bisschen weiter mit dem, ähm, also die Übermacht des Menschen auf dem Planeten. Na, das heißt, wir haben keine Wahl. Das, also das ist, jetzt ne, kommen wir auch in sehr philosophischen Fragen, aber wenn wir das nicht schaffen, überlebt den Planeten. Also das regeneriert sich äh, viel schneller, als wir denken. Und jetzt nochmal, also diese ja, also ich, ich glaube, wir müssen grundsätzlich auch an unserem Diskurs was ändern. Also weil das ist auch Teil vom Kolonialismus, ne? Kolonialisierung des Planeten, der Natur etc. Und jetzt auch in dieser äh, Let's, Let's Save the Planet ähm, bleiben wir auch in dem gleichen Muster gefangen. Es ist ja wahrscheinlich nötig, das müssen wir tun. Aber wenn wir auch daran glauben, dass etwas Größeres als wir auch ähm, in der Welt ist, ne? das glaube ich mindestens, dann würde ich denken, ja, dass... Ähm, dass wir einfach weiter, also wir können nicht weitermachen, wie wir machen, aber andererseits müssen wir auch eine gewisse Demut auch in dem Prozess mit, mitnehmen, also mitbringen. Ja. Herr Zielinski, äh, zum Thema Demut im Prozess. Ähm, wir 
Ich, ich gehe erstmal noch auf weitere Kommentare ein und dann, dann, dann die, die Frage direkt dazu. Also die Grundbildung, die die Volkshochschulen treiben, seien weit entfernt von Wohlfühlblase, wird, ein, wird eingespielt. Die Vielfalt der Integrationskurse in, in der, an den VÖX-Hochschulen, die, müsst, die müssten gehalten werden, um, um die Prozesse positiv abzubilden. Ähm, es wird gewünscht, ähm, ein, also die Volkshochschulen als, als positiven Ort äh, wahrzunehmen, also nicht angstmachend vor der Zukunft und ich gehe in den Kurs und danach bin ich kaputt, weil alles, alles, also wir bewegen uns nicht schnell genug und alles, äh, alles geht den Bach runter. Mag stimmen, aber dann komme ich wahrscheinlich nicht wieder in den Kurs der Volkshochschule. Ähm, und, ähm, die, ähm, aber es wird eben auch gefordert, Bildung für nachhaltige Entwicklung und Vielfalt ähm, in Programm also auch aktiv in die, in, in, die, in die Titel reinzubringen, aber eben auch in die Organisation und in die Verwaltung entsprechend hineinzubringen. Und wie mache ich das jetzt? Das ist jetzt die, die nicht ganz einfache Frage an Herrn Zielinski. Ähm, die Wie mache ich das als Volkshochschule? Bin ich re in Reaktion oder bin ich in Aktion? Schaffe ich es, Themen selbstgesteuert einzubringen oder bin ich an dieser Stelle einfach komplett nachfrageorientiert? Vielleicht nur ein Satz zu den Kommentaren. Es ging ja um den Nutzen der Volkshochschulen oder der Weiterbildung und die Vielfalt im Angebot ist ja völlig unbestritten. Also Grundbildungsangebote sind natürlich keine Wohlfühlblasen und Integrationskursangebote, Alphabetisierungskurse sind auch keine Wohlfühlblasen. Also nur um das nochmal klarzustellen, dass es keine Missverständnisse gibt. So, uh, it's quite uh, a task to reform administrative processes, but there is a practice where Volkshochschule and administrations closely cooperate to work together and to cooperate and to change things. Of course, this is more a long-term project, and I agree with you. In 10 years' time, we will not sit here together again in the same way. And to reform the administration can only be done in, from inside. And here I see uh, a possibility for Volkshochschulen to deal with these issues and also to address institutional disadvantages. I think the adult education centers are part of the public infrastructure and of the discourse. So we should also approach our providers, not only our participants. You have already said quite a lot I wanted to say. We as adult uh, education centers are not operating in a vacuum. There are funding regulations and many centers do not deal with these issues. So we just get three or four teaching units that are remunerated and some centers cannot afford this. And they focus on things that gives you more teaching units. This is always a handicap. I know many centers that say I do it, we do it nevertheless because it's so important. But while these opportunities are still restricted and that there are also restrictions, funding restrictions, we are not free to develop what we should do. So to reform administration is a long way and it has to be done gradually and to do this we have to be in dialogue with policy makers. We do it, uh, we uh, question how do political systems work and what can our clients do to change things. This is also our task. Uh, 
and with whom do I do it? Uh, what partners do I need to achieve these goals? So local actors, whom can they address to get expertise for offers for public actions, online conferences? With whom do I have to form an alliance to achieve these goals? Maybe. Uh, Just very briefly, it's uh, probably good to uh, think about what the foundation of our actions is. We're talking about moral, uh, we should ask ourselves whether we, actu whether we actually reach out to our target groups. We can uh, have a look at the statistics, that would be a good um, foundation to see uh, where uh, a certain target group lives and so on. We could also cooperate with NGOs engaged in uh, climate change, but if it doesn't meet um, uh, the demands regarding the target group, it doesn't make any sense. Let me put this into perspective. Um, sustainability is very close to our Heart and in cooperation with Fridays for Future, uh, we also have cooperation with um, the NABU um, uh, Environmental Protection Association. Uh, we also uh, have alliances with uh, migrant organizations that are self administered. In some of the communities, uh, this uh, approach is uh, working out really fine, really good. And we also have to make sure how we can cooperate on the uh, governmental level, be it uh, thanks to advisory councils for um, adult education centers to be part of the political decision-making. It's also good to have our DVV, um, the uh, Education Centers Association on the lender level to make sure that we're also involved in local decision-making within this cooperation with um, the uh, stakeholder would you say that you rather moderate or that uh, do you think uh, added education centers should uh, be the engine here? Well, they should de definitely uh, drive um, change, but in some of the aspect, it's also it also makes sense to uh, um, serve a greater good and. Um, just listen to what other experts have to say, because some associations um, may work on a certain topic, and we all only provide logistics, um, provide facilities, rooms um, for teaching, and so on. There was a comment from the audience saying that um, adult education centers are not only uh, hosts for a conference um, managers, but there are websites uh, for new target groups. Uh, they run networks for, uh, for continuing education material. I'll uh, pass on the floor to you now. I liked the very pragmatic contributions. I'm also an honorary uh, chair of the BUND Saxony. And I also like the fact that uh, you're from uh, an adult education center uh, in a place where I uh, spent my last holidays, which is the island of Rügen at the Baltic Sea. At the same time, 
as much as I like, like the fact that you are pushing for a reformation of the German administration. I mean, uh, this uh, seems a mission impossible. Just think about um, how ineffective the German administration um, is working because of the uh, non-existence of digitization. So with all the advantages of digitization, it's uh, nice to reach out to more people as nice it's, uh, it is to uh, have uh, personal encounters in, on site in person as we have here. But um, a driver of modernization is digitization. Now, because of the limited funding, I think it's attractive um, to um, be the host for certain events, just providing your facilities and networking with um, partners that are really experts in uh, certain topics in the best of the cases. So and if you'd um, use uh, digitization for those events that um, you host together with uh, expert partners, you would be able to reach out to many, many more, a much greater audience. That's what the uh, Education Centers Association already pushed for to uh, provide facilities, also digital spaces for um, the uh, acquisition of knowledge in those fields. There was one more question from the audience saying that integration and in language courses, which is demand driven, but um, they are not voluntary, and that could be a chance, an opportunity to reach out to uh, people that uh, would not normally go to a VHS course and that couldn't be reached out to um, within uh, a school career. So such mandatory language courses are a great driver to reach out to uh, target groups that are um, maybe not a conventional customer or client for ed education centers. Well, I see those integration courses very critical because they are based on the uh, assumption that a certain culture like the European one is um, more powerful than uh, a different culture. So there is a hu huge injustice here, thinking that one culture is dominant. I know that they teach about German democracy too. But uh, having those mandatory courses um, is something that uh, should, we should rethink. And in general terms, offering other languages not only targeted for migrants, targeted on migrants because then target groups are split and some language courses are mandatory where we are trying to educate those people and make them fit in the German culture. Um, so as you'll see, um, I'm, uh, I have quite some criticism and I think uh, we should question those courses. 
how do you think we can uh, integrate those topics in those courses? Mm, I would also like to reform those integration courses. At the same time, they're important for the say, first steps to start a self-determined life in uh, Germany. But I see massive deficits regarding their goal. There should be much more differentiations from a pedagogical perspective. We know that many participants will not be able to um, to reach that goal because of um, interrupted educational biographies. So we have to rethink how we can support people to make sure they'll find their place in our society and to lead a self-determined life to settle down here in Germany. And I see a huge potential in those integration courses because I see that they'll get the chance to um, catch up with a um, school leaving certificate that they weren't able to obtain because um, they were displaced and had to leave their home country. So those integration courses should also be an incentive for us to get new course uh, directors and to become more diverse here. Maybe one more thing uh, regarding the services that should be provided and also according to surveys, what do migrants need when they um, arrive in Germany and also regarding the recognition of high school or of um, professional diplomas. Many courses would be unnecessary because uh, it, it, they would be necessary if more diplomas, foreign diplomas, would be recognized here in Germany. And uh, that also brings me to a further point, the quality. Um, well, um, time is running and we only have 10 minutes left, so one more question here. At school, uh, courses is mandatory, and at uh, adult education centers such as Volkshochschule, um, people usually usually go there on a voluntary basis, and they're more enthusiastic um, about what they learn there. Now, how do we c manage to be more social? to provide more social integration, to reach out to those in the courses, to uh, uh, make a personal more resilient and to not overwhelm those um, staff members with all of the topics that uh, shall be taught. Someone is keen to learn something new when he or she has the feeling that uh, um, that um, the content uh, makes provides you um, facilitates your life. Learning um, with pain does work too, but it's less effective. Now, how can we? How can we adapt to that? Learning through pain and then learning through um, enthusiasm, it uh, brings me to the administrational reform because first of all, you have to apply for funding and then you will get the funding. But anyways, I was just joking. Um, Let's think about what uh, people need when they get here. They bring all the questions with them. So I think we need a much more participatory approach here to uh, 
um, react more upon the uh, demands that our users have and then we have those institutionalized uh, integration courses on the other hand that were designed from a policy um, from the police office so uh, more uh, more participation in the courses would um, help a lot here how can we manage to become more resilient that's an issue indeed I think the last two or three years uh, has burned out many, many of our colleagues, and they were at the limit of what they were able to stand. And as they're rather a female institution, they like to um, really do their best, reaching out to everyone, covering all of the topics. And uh, this uh, leads you to the fact that this is surely impossible. So maybe we should rather focus on some of the points, even though it uh, personally hurts me. And resilience is a big topic here, I think. Uh, Cohesion between colleagues is extremely important, uh, making sure that no one feels lonely. And uh, despite of all the digital and uh, interconnections, you felt lonely because you didn't see your uh, colleague uh, anymore. You didn't have your colleague next door you had to make an appointment to see each other in person. So the personal contact is extremely important here. And being part of such a conference here, or our federal conference, enabling exchange and um, knowing I'm not alone with my struggles is extremely important, which is why um, those conferences are extremely empowering and uh, give us the strength to go back uh, to business. And just hearing a, que a sentence like adult education centers are great, that would be something really healing for us. Well, adult education centers are great. Um, last round, we only have four minutes left. Encouragement, being more demanding and concluding one question. Let's start on the right hand side here. How should adult education centers adapt to change? while preserving their core competence or while preserving their tradition, their core mission. How can they manage to preserve this inner mission while changing at the same time. I think it's important to think about what uh, Volkshochschule is for. Some reasons for what adult education centers exists are positive and others are negative, coming back to hierarchies. So the question of differences in class should be central here and is at the core of um, everything to make sure that we still st stick to our mission. As I already mentioned, we have to go back to our roots. And once we know why we do what we do, which is offering 
services of education to many people. It will also give us the power to be there for many people, independently of their origin, their religion, their um, race, and their financial resources. Optimism can be really contagious. Try to be optimistic. Be a role model. Even if we find this uh, stupid in a normative way, humans are born to orientate themselves on other human beings and to copy other people's behavior. You can measure that most of the people feel uncomfortable when they don't really know where they stand. But you speak to those who are already on the move and who already know um, that we are on the verge of change. And if you have strong cooperation partners, um, I'm sure you'll achieve your goals. What you said, Sabine, is correct. Going back to the roots, when we uh, had our 100-year university, I had a look at old courses and the ability for change should be is basically the second name of the adult education centers because as an institutions and us as um, human beings who work at those education centers it's good uh, to be optimistic and optimism is also a good driver for change We have a really meaningful logo this year. I'd like to invite you to have a closer look at it again on your way home. Change is already happening, and uh, ed education centers are a main driver for social change. Now, with um, this momentum, knowing that Volkshochschule is a great institution, ed education centers are a great a thing. So thank you so much for your valu valuable work and for all your commitment. Thank you also to the participants of the plenary here.
I got peace in my mind I got peace in my mind Knowing that we've got the ties that bind Gives me peace in my mind The lights are so much brighter The colors so I got joy in my soul I got joy in my soul The fact that you're happy is what's making me whole Puts a little joy in my soul I got love in my heart I got love in my heart The promise that no man can tear us apart Puts a lot of love in my heart The lights are so much brighter The colors so I got more I can give So much more I can give As you pour and pour into me over again But I got more I can give The lights are so much brighter The colors so
In der Hoffnung, dass man das draußen hört, auch draußen hört, sagen wir, lade ich jetzt alle sehr herzlich ein, zurückzukehren in diesen wunderschönen Saal, damit wir uns dem nächsten Abschnitt unserer Veranstaltung widmen können. Ich hoffe, man hört das draußen. Gundula, ich glaube, man hört es nicht draußen.
So, ich versuche es jetzt noch einmal. Well, let me try it again. I think we can almost start. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, we are now quickly nearing the end of this uh, conference, and we will now have the final plenary. Uh, the title is Together in Diversity Volkshochschulen as Agents of Transformation. And I welcome Konstantin Schreiber. All of you will know him from the Tagesschau News uh, program. And he already attended the conference in 2016, where he was just awarded the Grimmel Award and there moderated a panel on integration. I'm very pleased to have you here, Mr. Schreiber, and that you will moderate the final uh, forum or plenary discussion. Now. I'm very pleased to be here after the last time in 2016. It's a new feeling to face so many people face to face, so this is something new after the numerous video conferences. So I'm very, very pleased to be here to moderate this discussion and to meet you in person. Well, integration is a major issue we want to discuss, but in a more broader context, integration is something I have been dealing with for years. The concept has changed as has our society. We, I, we are an immigration country and this also changes our challenges in the media and the challenges you face in the adult education. We want to take a look how new tasks may be defined. And I'm very pleased that at the beginning, we hear a keynote by the Minister of State, Reem Alabali Rodawan. A warm welcome to you. Mr. Ratnes, Mrs. Kramkanda, Mrs. Velvet from Westerholt, Mrs. Schreiber, dear participants of this conference in 2022, it's great to see so many. Well, as a Minister of State, I have not yet faced such a big, numerous audience and I'm very pleased that we can do it together today because the uh, issue is very close to my heart. Together in diversity is our motto. It goes with the objectives the government set itself to start a new beginning in integration. We want more respect and participation for everybody, no matter where somebody comes from, was born, and what somebody looks. More humanity in the asylum system and anti-racist actions. This is what drives me.
Let me list some points I consider especially important. First, we want integration right from the beginning. This means to learn the German language and to attend integration courses right from the beginning without any conditions like a perspective to stay or an end of an asylum procedure so that everybody can participate in the offers. And this means the integration courses need to be tailor-made I uh, see a big opportunity in smartphone, the use of smartphones and apps, and you have already gathered experience during the pandemic. And when we uh, look at the many people who come to the Ukraine, we now feel that we are lagging behind in the field of digitization. Only flexibility of adult education made it possible to keep up teaching during the pandemic. And I would like to thank of all, all of you because for many refugees, it was very important during the pandemic where people lived in community housing and were unable to go outside. It was very important for them to be able to learn German, to exchange, and you made this possible. I also work for inclusion, exclusion to be a part of the integration courses. So to link theory and practice, especially when it comes to civic education, I think integration courses should live to the same standards like schools. When you visit memorials, then this is much more feasible. This is very important also for people in integration courses. And integration courses in the country of origin are important. We also work on the issue of pre-integration. Because demographic change will keep us busy, and to be honest, it already does it now in many areas such as the labor market. We are in competition with many other countries, countries that are considered immigration countries like Canada and the United States. So integration consultancy should already be in the source country. And finally, I would like to see support from the country of origin to uh, Germany to make optimum use of the time and to facilitate life in Germany. These are major tasks we all face. Of course, funding plays an important role, and I think the change of the fee of teaching staff from 35 to 41 euros is the first step in the right direction. We, of course, want to continue on this road. There is still need for action, for instance, in funding the providers and also in reducing red tape when it comes to accounting. Thank you. Well, I hear you say I have to put an even stronger focus on this issue. So uh, reducing red tape uh, also in integration courses. I'm already in contact with the Federal Minister of Education. We are continuously working on improvements also for the education providers. 
and we want to improve integration courses and more funds have been uh, made available by the Ministry of the Interior. And it will be used for uh, these purposes. The second point, important for a new beginning, and I know this is something very close to your hearts, people need fair perspectives. We have to put an end to the endless uh, chain uh, stays and give uh, those people who have been here longer than five years to give them really a perspective to stay. And we are working on it. The federal minister has uh, presented a bill to this end because it's not human to uh, force people to sit idly. Many people are affected by this, and I do hope that this bill can be adopted before summer so that we can, can give a real perspective to the people affected. Third, diversity and participation needs to be something that is granted to everybody. Public service, only 12% of public servants uh, have a migration background, while in the total population it's 27% in big cities, it's sometimes 40%. But in the ministries, you find these people more seldomly. They work more often in the lower wage brackets. Uh, for this reason, we need specific measures to enhance diversity so that we uh, in the as the German government can be a role model. And of course, I work for diversity in all areas, be it the business sector, the media, and also education providers. It uh, affects all structures. We should look everywhere whether we really reflect the diversity of our society. And we also want to introduce a diversity law. Our diversity is already a reality, but it also has to become a normalcy everywhere. And we are now starting the, to implement this. Participation and diversity also means to address the negative sides, such as hatred, uh, anti-Semitism and uh, racism. So one thing I consider very important, fourth, the fight against racism. I'm the uh, anti-racism commissioner and the chancellor decided that I'm reporting to the chancellor. This shows how important this is to the German government. The uh, uh, chancellor repeated it just yesterday for much too long, much too little was done. The federal government will position itself here to allow for more civic education and stable funding of those who have fighting racism for quite a long time. People affected need respect and must be heard. Their perspective should be the focus of our actions. So I will be a voice piece and also a contact for those affected by racism. Fifth, we now want to create a modern nationality law, 
allowing more naturalization in an easier way and also allow for multiple nationalities. Germany has been an immigration country for a long time. Now the point is to make it a modern immigration country. Everybody has to do their bits. We want to shape a modern immigration country, and I'm very pleased to know that the Volkshochschule are a strong partner supporting this and the German government. I wish you an interesting discussion and we will have now a panel discussion and I hope I could give you some food for thought for this discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, impulse. Well, let's see where we can take a seat. Uh, just choose one. And uh, please uh, come on stage, uh, your co um, plenarists the head of Volkshochschule Dresden and the head of the German Adult Education Centers Association, Mr. Rabanus. A warm, warm welcome. Now the focus on integration after your keynote speech. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question, Mrs. Alabali Radovan. I uh, remember when I started out and I started dealing with this topic 10 years ago, we thought integration means something like assimilation. Someone comes to Germany, they um, uh, take a, a course at uh, Volkshochschule or somewhere else and they do their best to en integrate themselves and then they, they'll become like uh, the uh, majority of the society, and that's it. I think there's been a change. Well, I certainly hope that there's been a change in attitude. Of course, integration is not assimilation. That's very important for me to highlight, and it's not a one-way road. And uh, there needs to be an approach uh, from both sides. For decades, um, there's been this assumption that someone has to perform to be integrated and to have a residence status. But at the same time, we made it very difficult for many to be integrated. Many uh, are not allowed to work. Many are not allowed to go to a language or integration course. And that this is not going to work out is something that we finally realized within the coalition agreement of the uh, Greens, the Liberal Democrats, and the, Christ, uh, the Social Democrats. Um, we said that we are on the verge of a new era. And I'm proud to be part of this. Uh, a new era. It's uh, correct and it's good that um, migrants are provided with uh, those services. Mr. Rabanus, integration work um, taking place at uh, Edit education centers as one of the most important um, network in this uh, sector. Do you see that uh, your work is being intensified because of the crisis taking place in Ukraine? Definitely. Uh, back in 2015, with um, my with uh, strong uh, migratory uh, movements, we were already a, a strong partner. This is a pool of excellence that we can go back to. And according to my perception, there's no Volkshochschule out of the 900. 
becoming nervous new now, because, but they're rather um, laid back knowing that we do have the competence and the uh, experience with regard to uh, integration courses. And as the uh, Minister of State just described, we want a holistic approach in integration, which is also part of the uh, DNA of the uh, VHS history. For more than 100 years, it was part of our mission to empower people thanks to participation. Our mission remains the same. I think uh, we succeed in implementing this min mission, and it's also um, uh, resp responsibility I'd like to highlight here for the federal government, also thanks to the act that was passed to promote democracy. We don't only count on 900 um, Volkshochschulen at education centers, but also more than 300 affiliates where uh, democracy is lived on a daily basis. These are structures that are unique in Germany, and we are ready for the future. Regarding the uh, act to promote democracy that was passed, is something that we'll come back to later on. Let's uh, stick to integration, uh, participation, and diversity. Mr. Kuvner and Ms. Anna Baliradovan, uh, I'd like to uh, hear your evaluation too. Now, uh, let's have a look at the uh, biographies comparing East and West Germany. Would you say that um, East German? Lander face different challenges than uh, other than uh, West Germany does. Certainly, yes. But I'd like to come back to what you said in the very beginning. I was impressed by uh, what you uh, said. I think we all felt, and I'm uh, saying this on behalf of all of the colleagues listening to you here. Um, I like the way you highlighted that a diverse society is part of the DNA of um, Volkshochschule of Adult Education Centers. So we are all the more delighted to have you with us here today. Thank you. And of course, East and West Germany still face uh, differences. At the same time, uh, we have challenges that we share. Uh, how can we make sure that uh, migrants uh, are part of shaping our society, which is a major challenge? I hope uh, um, I'm uh, speaking on behalf of everyone here, saying that we as the reception society um, have a major responsibility here too. For example, um, protection measures um, by the police that are part of those solutions, as um, sad as this may be. And then there are also other stakeholders who are very engaged in um, spreading the word and uh, living up to our mission. With um, people with migratory background and you with your political perspective and representatives of adult education centers. Which role would adult education centers um, play here? First of all, thank you very much uh, for your offer from uh, the bottom of my heart. But also before coming here, I already knew that uh, Volkshochschule are important or central partners of democratic work. As we just talked about uh, East Germany, and I'm from Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, let me say something here. There are many places where no structures are left to uh, political education to take place, to have um, exchange between 
uh, migrants and the reception society, or however we want to call them, whatever we want to call them. I'm not quite sure about the wording yet, but um, the adult education centers are an essential institution here because everyone um, knows them. And that they uh, offer spaces to those who are coming here and those who have been here for long. And something I'd wish for is that we have a much closer cooperation, not only in terms of integration, but also on the backside, the flip side, talking about racism, anti-Semitism, and how to fight those issues, because um, cohesion and diversity also means that we finally leave this behind, which is not only the problem of those affected, of the victims, but of each and every one of us. And this is something that we have to tackle together. Ms. Anovali Radovan just uh, talked on migrants and those involved in administration now. What about um, adult education centers? I'm not quite sure whether there is um, a figure on how many, how diversity is reflected in the, the stuffing, the stuff. This is certainly a topic, and I think uh, there's still room for improvement. I don't want to point at several uh, education centers, but it's also part of our work as the uh, Federal Ed Education Centers Association. So we still have work to do. I am uh, very delighted that we have a very committed diversity committee, and uh, I'll have the pleasure to engage in dialogue with them which is also important because we have to make sure that our own organization also represents diversity so can, we can live up to our mission to provide continuing education for everyone because if you want to address a certain target group that we don't uh, represent, um, there's something that we have to work on. But of course, and these are processes that will uh, that are still ongoing and take their time. But I'm sure that this is one of the important pillars to take this seriously. What we realize is that the more diversity we have amongst colleagues, the more empathy we have for the uh, problems that are faced by those who use our services. In a different forum yesterday, we discussed that it's uh, correct to have more diversity in uh, those who have important um, positions. There's a colleague from Vienna who had a closer look at um, who's the, who are the facility managers, for example. And many of them said, well, these are extremely qualified. They just didn't have their diplomas recognized yet. And so they decided to turn those facility managers or service personnel into uh, teachers, which is a great approach, I think. Also, the uh, receiving society plays an important role here. What about the concepts that you design? Well, we are lucky enough to already have a lot of spaces at our disposal. So we need to address those who provide those services, 
but also those who uh, need to find us. And we have to reach out to those where a lot of different approaches that we uh, make use of. We have partners that we work with, be it in a social work, on a municipal level, to create alliances with those who we like to have more represented in our societies. I think there are a lot of different approaches here. When we have a look at practical work, it's a very challenging mission. So it's not enough to just uh, off offer a course for uh, racism and then we'll have Van Storch and all those politicians. That's, that's not enough. We need more structures in uh, the social sector. We need to be more aware of what people think and uh, those conversations, they're not always easy. In Dresden, for example, we had a terrible conversation on what um, the German Heimat stands for what your home means, what's home for you. And um, all of a sudden someone um, made a contribution saying that, or several of them, uh, only wanted to have a very exclusive society, excluding those with uh, different uh, backgrounds. Um, so these are dynamics that we're also facing. It was a terrible situation and incident. But um, according to my experience, it's uh, much more effective to see uh, diversity as something enriching, enriching. Saying you as a receiving society, uh, look at uh, all those um, extra, all the extra value that those who come here bring with them. This is something we should build on. Something I forgot about, forgot to say was that you can use the application asking your questions. Um, you're already doing so without me <laughs> mentioning this point and I only had a look at the tablet here and I'd like to pick up on a question that apparently many of the users are asking themselves, how can we make uh, people more enthusiastic about uh, integration courses and how can we integrate them into lifelong learning? <laughs> well, this is a very difficult question and I think it's also linked to the fact that we have to coordinate our services with those who, are, who we are designing them for. Sometimes we are performing even better than we might think, but something there is still room for improvement, not because we didn't want to, but just because we lack funding and we don't have enough time left to uh, listen to uh, what our users are looking for. And I think modern education is something that we can only shape and design together. And if there's uh, a user, a target group that I don't quite know yet, I first have need the time to reach out to them and uh, understand what their demands are all about. Um, just to give you an example, we had a project that had nothing to do with migration. It was uh, where we wanted to invite illiterate people and we went to uh, stadiums. And the best information that we received um, were, it was information 
that we receive from a person call, calling uh, or named called Enrico, who uh, managed to start learning. And these are the key people that we need, that we need to reach out to. That's uh, great. And it's a great advantage of diversity also within the structure, uh, which is what many companies say, that diversity is uh, strength that uh, is, has a huge potential for companies, but it should also be the case for our government and for ed education courses, but with them. Um, respect to educa integration courses, for many this is associated with uh, the pressure of having to perform because it's also linked to a resident status. Uh, you have to succeed in A1 and A2 and then B1 uh, to get employment and there are a lot of constellations which create a lot of pressure and it's a challenge to change the atmosphere here to make sure that people are really enthusiastic about learning and that they enjoy the experience, the learning experience, which makes them stay with Volkshochschule. Maybe just Getting back to uh, to you, I know you are not uh, the one, not the head of the uh, program Living Democracy. It's rather part of the uh, Ministry of Family Affairs. Is there any chance to get permanent funding in the sector? Well, by passing a law to promote democracy, what we try to do is to uh, have sustainable funding on those topics. I'm not uh, the uh, director of this, uh, or this, I didn't design this project, but uh, maybe in her statement, the uh, Minister of Family Affairs will come back to this. Promoting democracy, but um, well, uh, we also have to make sure that we uh, keep the schedule as the uh, Minister of Family Affairs will also connect uh, or speak at our conference here. How can we reach out to those who wouldn't be? wouldn't come to uh, our courses uh, usually. Well, we have to make sure that our services are attractive. I think uh, many of our courses and participants um, already spread the word. And uh, according to statistics and uh, surveys, our services reach out to uh, society as a whole. At the same time, we know that uh, we are still have some groups that we are weren't able to reach out to as much as we like to. So it's about um, rethinking our project design and offering different formats of events, going to uh, where people already are. But let me add something here, because Mr. Kuvnen already mentioned this. Um, what we need are resources, and many times uh, funding clashes with um, the available services and uh, learning units that we are able to f provide and to, to offer. Angesichts 
well looking at the time actually i would like to take up this but uh, i will do this at a different place as to your question participation is one thing two terms have become important experience and curiosity. If I want to show somebody there is something they do not yet know and they should develop an attitude, uh, I have to allow them to make a discovery and adult education can do this to open spaces of experience and to get people there they need to be made curious this is a challenge and uh, we need to invite the different communities and uh, we offer very interesting courses so for instance cooking I uh, cooked with uh, police agents and asylum seekers and when the asylum seekers can tell the uh, police agents how to cut a uh, cucumber that the uh, final dish is very tasting, then it's something good. Well, when it comes to eating, integ with, uh, integration has much made much more progress than in other areas. I think it's a very intriguing point. I asked the question because I think it's difficult. You mentioned the event with the known comedian. People, well, perhaps I come to this a bit later because Lisa Paus has just joined us. She is waving. Can you see her on the screen? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Minister of Education. Of, of family and senior citizens. We can see you, but we cannot yet hear you. But the mic is on. Now we can hear you. We are very pleased to have you here. And we are looking forward to your input. If you still need to settle something, just tell me when you are ready. I'm ready. Okay, then we are looking forward to your input. Um, Mr. Abanis, Mrs. Radavani, dear guests, I have seen you are many, and I welcome you very uh, warmly. 800 participants at the VHS conference, a huge event where representatives of 900 Volkshochschulen meet. These are impressive figures. I'm sorry that I cannot be with you. It's a plenary week, but I like to join you online. It's about the diverse uh, challenges we are facing and the role the adult education can play. Uh, challenges of digital transition, of ecological change. I, of course, know uh, the Volkshochschule. I uh, also taught uh, a, a typing course, and uh, I attended such a course, and I man uh, managed to uh, make 210 strokes per minute at the time, thanks to this course. As you see, I know how important Volkshochschulen are everywhere they are a guarantor for education, but they are also a local meeting point for different people, senior citizens and engineers interesting in colonialism or the young Afghan woman who attends an integration course. Volkshochschulen are the umbrella where people of 
different walks of life, different skills, age, come together and where they can exchange. This is the reason why uh, Volkshochschulen are important partners for my ministry. All your target groups come to us. More than half of the participants are in the middle age group, but pensioners Ich finde, das ist eine wirklich gute, breite Mischung. Und das birgt natürlich auch die große Chance, die auch sehr unterschiedlichen Gruppierungen auch miteinander ins Gespräch zu bringen. Das ist dringend notwendig. Wir alle haben vermutlich wahrgenommen, dass dieser Zusammenhalt in der Gesellschaft abgenommen hat, teilweise dramatisch. Das zeigte vor allem die heftige Polarisierung der Bevölkerung in der Corona-Pandemie. Das zeigte schon das Aufkommen der rechtspopulistischen Bewegungen. Die Polarisierung zeigt sich auch in der Dauer Aufgeregtheit und Aggressivität. In the aggressiveness. I see my new ministry as the central house of the government, and I see its central task to increase and enhance the cohesion. It's very important to have a dialogue between different age groups and to discuss how they see the world. I think there are not many institutions that are better fitted to moderate these discussions. Together in diversity, this is your motto. It also shows that our society is getting more and more diverse, which is an enrichment. Teams get more and more diverse, but this also requires good management, different interests, different cultural backgrounds. When they come together, conflicts will arise. Common rules need to be negotiated together. This is why my ministry supports programs to uh, manage conflicts, for instance, by uh, plan game, uh, how to discuss, how to negotiate conflicts in the society. A group of 19 pupils in a school of Spire uh, had their conflict directly in front of their doorstep. The old school who is in a residential area, and actually the neighbors were quite unnerved because there was a lot of voice. Then uh, the uh, different groups had problems. Uh, a band wanted to play music while the yoga group wanted to exercise there. With this project, the group helped each other to develop rules, how to control conflicts. This is very important because without cohesion, also democracy will suffer. This is why my ministry supports civic education. When children and young people learn early on that they can influence democratic processes, they will continue to enhance our democracy. And this is why it is so important that adult education tries out, out new formats. As a mother of a teenager, I know it's not easy uh, to bring young people to leave the internet and go outside. Well, there are uh, courses for escape rooms in the Volkshochschule. There was an escape room about sustainability where the players had to change their consumption behavior to get into the next room. This would also be good for my son. So I'm very pleased that uh, this Dutch projects are also 
funded by the ministry. It shows the creativity of the folk social system, which is important also to reach out to vulnerable groups. The big challenges challenge uh, is to create more cohesion, and this also requires outreach work. So I'm very pleased that Volkshochschulen use a lot of cooperation, such as vocational training institutions. The 16th youth report showed that especially an expansion of extracurriculum work is necessary. So uh, we have increased our the budget for extracurriculum to 12 million. This has helped us to intensify the work with our program uh, living Democracy, we promote different projects against extremism, the uh, spreading of extremism places big challenges to this society. The anti-Semitic attack in Halle and Hanau, these are just two peaks of the iceberg, also the spreading of hatred and conspiracy myth in the web show how important education is. I, uh, I saw how you respond to hate speech with your module box. The uh, program Living Democracy has started with about 40 million euros in 2015, now we have more than 180 millions available for such projects. But we won't stop here. We want to have a legal order or a legal task for the government. We, in our ministry, we want to adopt a Democracy Promotion Act, and I'm very pleased that I'm currently working on this bill, which we want to introduce to the German Parliament by the end of this year. Actual. Currently, what we see with them in terms of the war against Ukraine our new ressentiments and attacks. This is why we decided to provide more funding, both for partnerships within democracy and centers for democracy and the uh, Federal Center for Democracy, with the aim to enable preventive work, the integration of the displaced people from Ukraine is also something we take charge of when providing uh, kindergarten places to those who had to leave their home country. Many courses that they uh, take part in are uh, language courses to learn German. Mr. Rabinus, how do you discuss the topic of diversity within the uh, German Association of uh, Adult Education? when uh, the vast majority of staff is uh, without migration background and without diverse biographies. The same as we in my ministry try to become more diverse in terms of age, diversity, origin. Um, people from East Germany also still underrepresented in our ministry. This is something that has to change because otherwise we are no ministry of diversity. I think that uh, we lack uh, diversity in many areas. What about you in your ed education centers? This is essential because you are those who teach uh, transformation in your municipalities, which I wish you fruitful discussions and a great conference day today. Thank you.
thank you very much, uh, Federal Minister. This is an exciting question, uh, Lisa Paus. Uh, we've already brought uh, this topic on the table, but I'd have two questions to ask you. I think we still have the time. Some of the participants here have the uh, chance to ask their questions in our applications. One of the most burning questions was, what about adult education? As you mentioned, education for the rather uh, young people. What about adult education? It's uh, equally important, but as far as I'm informed, um, the uh, adult education centers have worked in this field since they were founded. One of our focus is to promote democracy based on uh, uh, the society as a whole, not only investing in uh, democracy promotion uh, at young people, but involving all generations. Applause here at the uh, conference hall. You just mentioned that uh, you're still working on it, and possibly the uh, ed education centers, Volkshochschule, think, uh, are wondering which uh, new um, tasks um, are uh, about to be there. This is uh, an enabling act. Um, we are not trying to make anything mandatory or to force anyone to do anything. We want to promote democracy in this country. We have had an important process of participation And uh, then we uh, forwarded um, this uh, to the different associations, and it will then get back to the uh, um, Federal Council and to the Parliament. What we asked was, what um, uh, do you uh, care for, and which points are important for you? And we now put our hands on the implementation. I think uh, um, uh, after the summer break, um, this um, act will become public then and will be adopted. What about those uh, adult education centers that uh, you um, were in dialogue with? Um, Federal Minister uh, Paus, uh, thank you very much for joining, and I hope that, uh, if possible, you might be uh, even back in person at our next Adult Education Centres Conference. You're still there, but you will probably disappear in a few seconds from now. We will continue our discussion. I'd like to uh, get back to Mrs. Rehm Alabali Radovan. Many people of the receiving society may think that uh, those migrating to our country have no understand or have no understanding of how democracy works, thinking that we have to tell them how it's um, done. How would you, what would you tell those people? Well. Um, I think that's an attitude that does exist, indeed. Uh, and this example uh, showed it uh, 
again, uh, I'm afraid that uh, we have to teach democracy to many people in our country too. But I still think that this is an important point, which is why excursions, uh, field trips are so important in uh, within those integration courses because it's an important part of civic education, understanding how democracies work. And as a parliament delegate, I have many appointments where we understand that um, con Continuing education on uh, how uh, our democratic system works is extremely important. We also have to remove uh, barriers. And what I find ex extremely vital when we talk about uh, civic education, some uh, of the participants here are from Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, some initiatives also engage um, people with a migration background. And this is extremely important to have a mutual uh, process of learning because we can learn a lot about other political systems. And this is also an important point I'd like to integrate in this um, Democracy Promotion Act. Please involve um, those with migration backgrounds. Diversity plays an important role here. How do you deal with this at a Volkshochschule? I'm nodding. It's a very important point that you just mentioned. It's not a one-way road, as uh, Mr. Kuvner also said. It's enriching to have different cultures here and to see diversity as a as an opportunity. And we as DVV, uh, when we were asked about the Democracy Promotion Act, uh, we uh, highlighted that we want a holistic in definition of democracy, institutionalized democracy, knowing how the democratic system of a federal president or a chancellor has but it's, uh, it goes beyond that. It's about empowerment, empowering those uh, people to take a position, to, to live conflicts and to uh, accept other positions, to even appreciate other opinions, even if you don't share them. So this approach of Uh, holistic Democracy Promotion Act is uh, very important here. Let me come back to a question that was just asked in the application here uh, with uh, regards to critical self-reflection. Someone asked why is diversity not represented within the uh, um, board of um, the uh, DVV, of the uh, German Edit Education Centers Association. As uh, Mr. President says, we have to um, have a critical self-reflection, and I think um, we totally um, thought about this. Of course, um, all the um, directory positions are voted by uh, the members. So this is also a flexion of um, um, voting behavior of our uh, members. But we will also take this message to our new members um, assembly. Maybe going back to uh, civic education and democracy, how can we reach out to those who don't want to be confronted with this topic. You may say at a certain point uh, it's impossible to reach them, which would probably be the worst case. But what what can you do about this? Do you have any idea on how to 
reach out to those people. Maybe we have to be a bit more um, go more into detail here. Volkshochschule and Adult Education Center have a long tradition of engaging in dialogue. This dialogue has become a verse, as same as in uh, the world of media with uh, your work, because many people don't engage in ex in a dialogue because they would like to listen, but rather because they like to make an exclamation. And there's something that we have to work on. It's uh, not very easy to be implemented. The uh, minister president um, answers the questions of our participants once a year. And then uh, we have uh, strange um, yeah, participants in the room uh, asking strange questions, which takes a lot of time. And uh, civic education can be very diverse. Um, we mentioned the cooking courses. I think, uh, name it and we have it. Uh, there's so many different courses where people from very different origins uh, participate and where of the, all of a the sudden they have to get along with each other. This is also a good exercise. And we also have a trained uh, lecturers who try to introduce um, you know, essential um, rules of uh, behavior. We just uh, saw it with digitization. It's a field where we uh, implement civic education and asking ourselves how we can engage in dialogue. And one last thing, uh, one thing that we uh, made positive experiences with is uh, one uh, project we had in Dresden where one office is uh, provided to five communities, be it Syrians, Afghans, and they will get the office for one day and they will take the ch get the chance to impart classes. And we just started to design concepts with them. So now we uh, use weekends where communities get the chance to, uh, f for example, where parents say, look, can you provide our children with uh, civic education because they don't really know um, which country they com came to. And this is a very effective and uh, useful approach in, from my point of view. I just uh, received many uh, interesting ideas. At the same time, we have this big space of the internet. We have the uh, in-person dialogue, but uh, what about the internet where potentially everyone is available to be uh, reached at, but uh, we have other campaign opponents that pay a role. You mentioned hate speech, for example, Mr. Ravenous. Which opportunities do you have and which approaches could you make use of? Well, a lot is already going on. The uh, adult education centers have started early on to build up a digital infrastructure, which was very helpful during the pandemic. There was a cloud, there was an infrastructure which allowed us quickly to go from the analog to the digital world, but it also made clear 
that learning processes are personal and should be personal. Not all our education activities should be shifted onto the Internet. This is not our goal, but we have to see to it to have skills in the different institutions and uh, within our family and use it for additional services. One example I like, the app Stadtland Datenfluss, which was launched. It's a low threshold app with education offers. It is now relaunched with additional sustainable content where these technologies are being used. And there are many other examples one could mention to address new target groups uh, to get them into analog courses or vice versa. We have to pick out the best of both worlds and integrate it into our work. And in all modesty, I would say we are, have been quite successful. Well, what happens in terms of hate speech is really horrible. Twitter, I have formed a very clear opinion uh, about the destroying effect this medium has, but it exists. What concept do you have to counter it? Is it possible at all? And what can adult education centers do? I'm very interested in working on it together because I don't have a conceptual idea. It's such a difficult issue that nobody wants to touch because it is so complex. And we also have to talk to the corporations concerned, also the Federal Minister of the Interior deals with it also when it comes to criminal proceedings. One idea that is being discussed Menschen müssen mit ihrem richtigen where uh, you have to that you have to give your uh, name your real name uh, for a profile hoping that people do not comment it but uh, i see facebook as a special case it has become a very difficult platform and as soon as I say something about migration, I know what responses I will get. And it also shows a situation in the society or your example. How can we reach out to these people? The corona pandemic, the minister just mentioned it. What was going on in a certain group of people. What are we doing now? Do we forget about it? There were violent demonstrations. Sh should we just go on? But Facebook shows us, uh, or Telegram groups, right-wing extremist groups, also in security organization. These are difficult issues with which we need to deal in our area to enhance social coherence. We have to work on it together. I'm as a state minister can not do it alone. We all have to join in and what I consider very important 
everybody of us knows people who say difficult things, people with a strange political opinion, but one should not just keep silent and say, well, I will not discuss this subject with a certain person, because this will further polarize the society. We have to discuss it, and adult education centers provide this space. What other institutions exist where people of all walks of life, of different age groups come together and can discuss? So in the rural area, but also in big cities, such institutions hardly exist outside the uh, Volkshochschule system, because you really do a great job, and we have to continue to strengthen your work. Well, this applause uh, is very important for our future work. I don't think that uh, we can uh, reach out to somebody who spreads hate mail. This would overtax us, but what we can do, and I think we do it already, is that we can inform about the structures, about what is happening, and at least to help those who look at it from the outside to become multipliers. What we haven't discussed before, I think uh, the uh, Volkshochschule needs to work more uh, locally in the communities, and things can this can change it, and this will also change the job profile of adult teachers from uh, just providing information, but to become more a midwife of new ideas. So we have to get to the people and those who communicate, discover a solution there and become part of a whole. So when you want to develop something, for instance, in your neighborhood, this can bring people together, but to get there, we need a completely different funding structure. Uh, when I joined the uh, Volkshochschule 10 years ago, I uh, learned more about this funding according to uh, teaching units and I think we have to get away from this. The uh, urgency of funding and cutting red tape is something I see also when I look at the questions. Uh, but I think we cannot negotiate it here on the stage. One question that seems to be a burning one, the uh, uh, unequal treatment of different groups of refugees. You grasp the mic. Well, actually, I was looking more uh, at the adult uh, education centers. I took the mic because as an integration commissioner, I, of course, stand against putting people in different groups. 
And this is why I said that what we do quite well when it comes to Ukrainian refugees, this applies to all other people. And something I consider very uh, important, we at the federal level have to work that laws apply to everybody, integration courses right from the beginning, the possibility to work right from the beginning. But you know, this feeling people have from Afghanistan, from Syria, they get the feeling that they are uh, treated differently and we have to work on it because I also uh, hear this on site that this is a concern for many people. I see it as a very important political demand not to make a difference between different refugee groups. The legal sit uh, situation is different. We think it's not correct, but we also see that the coalition government wants to change things now. I cannot confirm from my own experience that uh, the uh, Volkshochschule treats different refugee groups in different ways, uh, or if so, then only according to the legal requirements. But of course, we uh, also want to be lobbyists in a positive way, and we should continue this dialogue in order to see what can be done. But I would reject that the Volkshochschule treats different refugee groups in a different way. I can only agree with it. On the contrary, I think it's very intriguing that different groups different nationalities now meet. Well, there was always the view from the outside because it had also something to do with the legal statement, uh, status. So some uh, had rights right from the beginning, and we discussed this with the uh, prime minister. But we can only say we uh, see uh, all the different refugee groups as equal. So we have brought many uh, points together. Thank you very much. Also, thank you, so thank you Mrs. Uh, Alabali Radovan. Mr. Küffler has to leave us soon. But we still have images from an action that took place yesterday in Leipzig. Uh, it was about to gather in diversity, and something was designed by uh, the by uh, this group of citizens. Just one explanation. People who just came by, they created this banner. It was an action of the DVV and the uh, Volkshochschule. Thank you very much and have a safe trip back to Berlin and then on to Dresden. Thank you very much.
We stay here for a moment, but I'm very pleased that the honorary president of the DVV, uh, Maria Susmut, is with us today, and I would like to welcome her onto the stage. A warm welcome to you. Well, let me say a few words, but first I would like to say it's good that we have been here. In a nutshell, because we met people I haven't seen, we haven't seen for a long time, despite different but also similar work we've done, I've been very pleased to see this large meeting. People need people, not only objects, and I was also pleased that it takes place in Leipzig. Uh, I think you have noticed that often we misunderstood the East Germans and we didn't recognize them enough. We learned learn this now. They are people like you and me, and this is where humanity starts, that you accept the other. And what we have learned from our division, which we sometimes still feel, we have also, we have learned people can achieve a lot we need strong people, not people who always self-critically ask themselves, what can the other do better than I can, but to ask, what can I already do well and what do I want to learn? Volkshochschule are education facilities in, at the digital level, we have to be careful not to get lost in the digital space. But this morning and also now during the last discussion, I found that our discussions with the policymakers have changed in a good direction. It's not about confrontation, but about finding solution together. So people have shown to us what the ideas they can develop. Today we have uh, discussed civic issues, also issues of democracy issues. What are we doing well and uh, where do we look for ways to become effective? But we in also need to be self-critical. Well, thinking of the discussions we had this morning and also now, I find whatever we say about performance, the development of people, let me call on all of us. We should work not to divide our society in those who belong to this society and those who are marginalized. This is our biggest task in the democracy. How can we uh, create cohesion in diversity? This is a great motto. 
but sometimes very difficult to implement. We know it from different novels. We want diversity, but basically speaking, the other should be uh, as close to us as possible, even if it makes them boring. So diversity is a very complex issue, thinking about the uh, different complexities where we have 26 diversity, and I found it quite difficult to understand our two uh, different identities and to overcome the uh, disadvantaging of women. Uh, probably I will not see it in my lifetime, but I won't give up. And I also consider it important to say I discovered quite a thoughtfulness so to listen to different opinions, such practical discussions are part and parcel of adult education centers. Some I have heard often, do uh, we still need the Volkshochschule system? I mean, women have been trained enough, especially the well-heeled ones. I can only say we urgently need them. And when I say this, I think of people who slowly approach to a f uh, adult education center and are a bit skeptical. It's very important for them to meet there somebody who welcomes them. Well, you know, it, such an attitude is like a child that doesn't feel its self-worth. And when their a teacher helps them and strengthens them in their development, and actually this is something adult education centers have always done, and we have learned quite a lot, and we are still on a learning curve. The, the current situation is enormously complex. People who believed in living in a stable society, which is really stable, then have now found that life has become less secure. But I see so many people in this society, Germans and non-Germans, who discuss the problems they have and look for solutions. It's also a task of research work. How can researchers participate to solve problems? Just imagine we would not have had the vaccination uh, substances, or just imagine it had only been German researchers. No, those people had a multicultural background. I could never have imagined that in my constituency in Göttingen, with its many uh, rural district, I could never have imagined that they would vote for a Turkish director, but this is what they did. Today, we discussed 
that we need funds for qualification. That's correct. But perhaps we should find a different wording to make people more independent. It's a different term uh, than uh, to qualify them. I would call on you continue to work on helping people to find their way in life. So my question is, uh, what can people create? Currently, I learned quite a lot from abroad, from also from South America or Africa. So actually, we need to help abroad, but also here, then the all communities will benefit. Well, I'm not quite sure how we can handle the big number of refugees. But we also asked this question in 2015, and we have managed sometimes we need to question standards or even dare not to comply with them to accept a group that is not uh, provided for in our guidelines. We have a lot of rules. This is not the uh, problem. Flexibility is important. Less red tape was mentioned. The Volkshochschulen need room for maneuver, and our young people need room for maneuver to test them out. This doesn't mean we can do without the state, but the state is not upside down, but it's also from bottom to the top. Well, I just want to say continue your work despite the difficulties. Do not give up. It's worth it to work for humanity and nature and just look what new solutions we have already found. So all the best. I have this conference experience as something encouraging, and this is the most important condition. Thank you very much for all this. Standing ovations, a very, very long applause. Thank you very much for your remarks and the very positive outlook. Um, I am uh, delighted that we are uh, able to go more into detail uh, concluding this conference. Annegret kramp karrenbauer thank you very much for coming. And Mr. Ravanus uh, arrive. Mrs. Uh, kramp karrenbauer uh, you, uh, uh, would you uh, share this opinion? 
uh, to have a very encouraging outlook um, because some critical aspects were raised saying that the world is the way it is. From a personal point of view and on behalf of Martin Rabanus and all of every one of you, I'd like to thank you, dear Rita. Thank you for this wonderful speech that was Rita Susmus in best shape, uh, a bit older, a bit wiser, but uh, just as enthusiastic as you always used to be. And we hope that you'll still be able to participate in many of the adult education uh, centers um, conferences. And as you just said, this is something that uh, I uh, heard in many of the conversations I had yesterday in the evening and today. It was a conference with a lot of uh, positive um, energy, a very positive atmosphere. And that's what we were longing for, a um, conference uh, that after the years of the pandemic to have in-person encounters, uh, to be a positive uh, sign for the future. And what I feel is that uh, we have a realistic uh, view of uh, the challenges that we face um, without um, trying to um, look away. Uh, but we still try to get better every single day. And this is what education is all about, making sure that you wake up a little bit smarter uh, than you went to bed. Uh, so this is what it's all about, and this was also the uh, motto <laughs> of this year's conference. This is something that I aim at as a journalist to to uh, get up smarter than <laughs> uh, I I went to bed with uh, when went to bed than when I went to bed. I imagine that you came here with a special mission that you were confronted with a lot of critical feedback. Um, what are your main takeaways at this conference, uh, this term of encouraging, this encouraging atmosphere that we'll probably go home now? And that was also the feedback uh, from the political uh, stakeholders which uh, this afternoon showed and also the um, welcome notes that we heard that to see that we have a very strong recognition of our work and what uh, Volkshochschule is all about. So it's not this um, cliche any longer thinking that we only offer uh, courses for housewives, but rather that we uh, have a vital role when uh, um, making sure that, that we have social cohesion and that we think sustainably. This is also an incentive, the same as our mission to create framework conditions for adult education centers and also framework conditions for our society, to shape our society. Mrs. Kramp Karrenbauer, what's your perspective, maybe a change perspective after the last elections? Do you think that um, the work of uh, adult education centers is uh, more appreciated and that they take this work more into account in terms of digitization, for example. First of all, I think it's extremely important to have a continuous exchange with uh, policy makers because policy makers uh, determine the framework conditions under which we work. and in my role as active politician and as president of this association, I saw that this network of adult education centers absorbing so many 
different atmospheres and attitudes. It's important to pass on all these vibes to those in charge in politics. The cliches about uh, adult education centers, and I hope that we can abolish these um, assumptions, but we are becoming a more and more recognized partners of the policymakers. Uh, with the foreign chancellor Angela Merkel, we discussed the question of how to provide a service with a low threshold. And I remember adult education centers saying, well, we'll create uh, this application. And I remember many experts saying, well, what you do is offering uh, cooking courses. So why do you want to develop an application now? And many people wouldn't believe um, how this was going to succeed. And this applies for our integration work and for civic education, but also on how to cope with um, challenges such as we see with uh, what's going on in Ukraine now. One question from the plenary that I like to bring up here regarding the meaning of uh, adult education centers as spaces for discussion. And there was one question in how far you we have to stand or, yeah, stand or in tolerate um, attitudes from the far right. I think it doesn't make sense to ignore those those positions. On the other hand, it's also a difficulty because we should not over exaggerate those positions or overestimate because it doesn't reflect diversity in society, but it's important to engage with those positions and to discuss with those with anti-democratic positions that we don't only know from the far right. It's important that we stand up for our values. So it's always a thin line of giving those positions too much space. Uh, we shouldn't do so, not uh, in media either, because we also saw how it's a challenge in journalism too, but we have to dismantle those positions as something that wants to undermine the stability of our society, and we have to defend ourselves. It's a question that was asked. It's a question that many of you are concerned with in your daily work because many people use our space for discussions are those who represent our society. So it's important that education centers are such spaces of dialogue. Diversity is just like democracy. It's the best that could have happened to us, but it's also the most exhausting thing, and it provokes conflict. And it doesn't help to just stop talking about those topics because it's dangerous to not deal with them. That's a major challenge for us as society. There are positions, there are um, forms of behavior where we have to defend ourselves and where freedom and tolerance has to stop also in the uh, spaces that uh, Volkshochschule offers. It's a thin line, and it's uh, these are 
difficult decisions that have to be made. We talked a lot about democracy and civic education. This is something that we have to grow with, always finding a way on how to live up to those uh, concepts. Now concluding the outlook without a further pandemic, the next conference will take place in five years from now. Where will we stand in five years from now regarding diversity, digitization? What do you expect? Nothing is as stable as change. Many things will have changed. I'm an optimist and I suppose that we'll be on a way of bringing a polarized uh, society back together in terms of a society and diverse, uh, diversity. This will be reflected in our entities and we will take this home. We will take charge of it. And also, I think we'll have a great adult education centers conference in five years from now with important discussions, fruitful discussions, and if possible, with a beautiful festivity of adult education centers at night. Something that I really very much enjoyed yesterday, you may notice from my voice. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what uh, will happen in five years from now, but there's something certain. We'll be able to cope with it as Volkshochschule. That's a beautiful closing remark, Mrs. Kram Karrenbauer and Mr. Ravanus. Um, didn't we forget something? Uh, Thanks uh, for um, adding uh, this important uh, detail. Mrs. Uh, Van Westerholt, our president of our association, I'll give you the chance to make a closing remark, and I'd like to uh, say thank you very much to you and to your team for organizing this event. And I'd like to expressively include the team of Leipzig Congress Hall and of and all of those who were in uh, who took part of the organization and implementation or realization of this conference, and I hope this, the conference in five years will be just as beautiful as this year's conference. Mrs. Van Westerhall, you'll have the floor for the closing remark. Thank you very much, Mr. Vabanus, Mrs. Kram Karrenbauer, and I'd like to pass uh, my thank you remarks to uh, Gundula. Kundula Freeling, could you come on stage, please? I've been thinking a lot on how to make her work visible. I thought about, uh, you know, such a Miss um, Griffith, uh, but I found it a bit kitschy, so um, she's my representative, all the planning, everything, all the details uh, were managed by Gundula and she was on the verge of uh, <laughs> being overwhelmed by all the work and uh, at some stage she said, I'm not doing this any longer, it's getting too much. And at some stage she said, if this is going on like this, I'll uh, go to the uh, Elephant House, so 
we'd like to give you a small gift, an olive tree being the symbol of this conference. You can take it home to remember, hopefully, in many years from now, because she's a very gifted uh, in terms of plants. She also uh, gave me a plant, and sometimes she runs straight into my office, and I'm wondering what she'll do, and she just uh, waters my plant. So she's really a very gifted uh, plant carer. And this is something that we designed with an insider a joke saying, well, I'll be at the elephant's house. <laughs> so thank you so much for this uh, beautiful conference, uh, for all your efforts, everything you made possible to have such a smooth um, conference day today. Let me add something. Now that uh, you'll go back home encouraged and empowered, we've uh, reached our goal, and that makes us very happy. And it's not only me who's happy, but also all of my colleagues. Of course, I'm not the master of the annual conference. Uh, many, many others um, were in charge, such as Ms. Kauche, um, in charge of public relations, who um, wrote a lot of press statements. And thank you, Mrs. Rose, for the look and feel of this year's conference. Everything worked out uh, just perfectly. And thank you so much to everyone else involved in the planning and organization. So this wouldn't have been possible without you. Um, have a safe journey back home. Um, keep up the good work and uh, stay safe. Take good care of yourselves. Thank you very much. So we are concluding the 15th annual conference of adult education centers. Have a safe trip back home. Thank you. Danke sehr. Alles Gute weiterhin.